Joe and Honey. Oh, let me show you. I'll save it for the stream. Well, I was about to say we all live now. Oh my goodness gracious! Tell you this. Uh, let me let me get this. Oh, I got the jankest email for a sponsorship thingy. Let me let me do 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 do. Uh, da, 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 da. I'm going to. Okay, it fits just excellent. Okay, let me. On the phone, it look on the phone. This is it's. Mm, let me click because it, it's on my phone. So let me just upload it real quick to our chat. It's it's beautiful. It's beautiful. Isn't that the jankest ass email that you have ever seen? What? What happened? I don't know what happened. <laughs> I don't know. Look at that. <laughs> I have like it's so these companies will often if they don't do it themselves, which I guess this per this person is uh, from wanna, the company. You wanna put it on the screen? Or? Oh yeah, you can put it on the screen. Yeah, there's nothing on there. Yeah. But uh but yeah, that's uh, mm, nice. I wonder what it looks like on like desktop. I should check that out because on phone it just it it looks so awful. Uh, it yeah, it doesn't look yeah, it doesn't look much better. God, it just looks like a scam. It does look like a scam. Gaming chair company. Well, you gonna do it? <laughs> I might have to just say, oh, send me one. I'll tell. I'll tell everyone what I think about it. Sounds like a good plan. Uh, yeah. Alrighty. So we are here today to do a little bit of catching up on. I think we'll start with. Uh, what are they called? Yeah, Streamlabs. That's the one. All right. Um, I don't, I don't get this. So you value your privacy more than your son, and then followed in with, "I will cut off your head now." Does that sound familiar to you guys at all? Familiar you value your privacy more than your son. I'll cut off your head now. I feel like I've, I've missed no. what that might be about, but that's okay. Mm -hmm. Um. All right. Look up and play Berserk Guts theme. Yeah, it's the. You guys have probably heard it in memes and stuff. <laughs> they do the thing again where they just ball a friggy voice. That's what it says. It's just like, what are you suggesting? <laughs> I think they just want us to know that's who the voices are. So I got, uh, my, my role is to say, uh, Fringy, you gay. Okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> just this blind acceptance of well, all right, all right, right. then I guess, yeah. Uh, yeah, well, yeah. No, I have sex That's with men in relationships with goo. I got news for you. That means you gay. That's that's Man, that's. I wonder what the context for all that's gonna be. <laughs> oh, it's uh, it's that meme from uh, one of those procedural shows. I can't remember which one, but it's. Where he's like, you gay, and then he goes, nah, -uh, cause I have relationships with women and All sex right. with bad. Then he goes, I got right. news for you. That means you gay. <laughs> <laughs> uh do, do, do. I'm adding a sore critique of TFA part four and said it requires a decade of careful editing to be ready. Good. That's, that's bad it feels that way. Uh also, don't read Spider Man comic made by JJ Abrams. Story is similar to TLJ. Is that new? Story similar to TLJ. I, I didn't think it know came that out he like made ten it. or fifteen years ago. Oh, well, yeah, oh. I could imagine it's not very good. He's um, he's got a particular style, writer. you know. His his yeah, <laughs> he definitely has a style. Get them mystery boxes, all right. Uh, also, oh wait, also also high rags, moobly, fringu, kick hello, commander, hey. and old guess. Hello, hi hi. Uh, favorite flavor of Tide Pod. Also, hola, senor rags. I remember them asking that to us hola. before. Yeah, cause, cause I mine is orange and blue. I don't know what the flavors are. They just taste really clean. But yeah. for me, it's orange and blue. You've already read these. I definitely don't remember reading out the fucking 
springy you gay thing. That's that's new. Mm hmm Um so what well, you gotta remember, sometimes people send the same one twice. So uh you might recognize some of these, but you might also not. Uh just right, recently had a shit take on Attack on Titan, and I had flashbacks to Wolf Mola tag team. Hey. Good times. Didn't just try it make an Attack on Titan video that everyone really hated. I think he took it down. Not too long ago. So he made like, another we... one? Oh, I don't know if he's made another one. Um, but yeah, that's, that's one that we couldn't really cover because I just don't know fucking anything about Attack on Titan. I assume you two neither do either either. I don't know anything about it. Yeah. Uh, for Vi and Abby, I mean, how are they both strong whammon? For Vi and Abby? Or how they both... It's a strangely said thing. It says, for Vi and Abby, I mean how they are both strong women. Huh. All right. I don't disagree with that. Okay. Pretty straightforward. Yeah, sounds about right. Happy birthday, Rags. Oh, hello, and thank you. Uh, is the Kung Fu Panda trilogy EFAP approved? First one definitely is. I, haven't, I can't remember the second one. I haven't seen the third. Yeah, I don't remember enough about it. I'd have to see it again. I'd have to see it again. I just said, why no Elden Ring? Because like, fucking, I gotta do this, lots this, of reading. And you already had Elden Ring for like four hours. My goodness. We have Elden Ring at home. I'm not metal. I can't stream. Do you know we streamed it for 13 and a half hours? In one go? Yep. God damn, I guess he likes it. He really or, likes it. I wouldn't be surprised if he starts eventually consider saying that it's his favorite game of all time. I wouldn't be surprised, but we might not get that. Uh, meanwhile, Theo has been cooking up some controversial perspectives on this game, and I'm now looking Ooh. forward to, to talking to him about the game, because I'm enjoying the hell out of it, but I'm also not, like, I'm not averse to talking about his flaws at all. I'm just like, yeah, let's do it. Uh, Metal, a real long man. It's true. So true. Super Chats and Elden Ring sounds hard. I would just have to run around the landscape and not actually do anything stressful. Um, oh, I'm a goofy gooba, yeah. You're a goofy gooba, yeah. <laughs> We're all goofy goobas, yeah. Goofy goofy gooba gooba, yeah. So Talk nice. about a movie that apparently has quite a bit of staying power. Everyone remembers the SpongeBob movie. Yeah, David Hasselhoff's in it. I'm like memes about it and everything. I remember that, yeah. <laughs> I don't remember yeah, much man. else about that film, though. Voodoo said that in Metal's chat that Theo has a new complaint every other couple of minutes. <laughs> well, nice. Look, Theo's, like I said, I've said this before, Theo's standards for Souls games are through the fucking roof. Like, you gotta, it ain't good enough if it's better than your average game. Like, that's not even close to good enough. He wants it to be better than uh, Dark Souls 1, I think. Um, even though Dark Souls 1 is filled with flaws as well. Is it? I'd be interested to hear what he's got to say. And maybe we will one day. Uh, this game is seven jammy dodges out of however many come in the pack. According to DSP, you are a money desperate shill for playing early. He said he doesn't care about money and will play tomorrow. Such a Sigma. <laughs> <laughs> when people desperate. mention him, yeah. He's, a, <laughs> he's on the Sigma metal Just, grind. Yeah. The idea of DSP calling anybody buddy desperate when he's like, I refuse to play video games unless the audience pays me. It's like, oh. Yeah, it's, uh, that's odd. Someone Thing who is, is like, notorious for that. Like, I played it pretty quickly because I just really wanted to fucking play it. I played a lot of Souls stuff. I call it Souls. It's not even accurate. It mm -hmm. should be From Software stuff, I should be saying. At this point, probably, yeah. yeah. Hi, Mola. Will you watch Jurassic World Dominion? It looks awful from the trailer already. Yeah, I'll watch it. When's it out? Do you know? Yeah, I'm going to watch it too, because Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom was one of the worst movies I've ever seen in my life, and I'm excited <laughs> to see the new worst movie in my life. I like to remind oh. people just how fucking horrifically bad Fallen Kingdom is. It's like, that movie was Fallen so Fallen Kingdom is bad. shockingly bad. Uh, yeah, is, is it the end of this year, or is it close to the middle? Wait, what? The new one? Yeah, I don't know when it's out. Uh, I think it's coming out, like, in a few months. Shimmer blockbuster. Ugh. Well, in that case, because yeah. I always want to rewatch 
all of them before watching a new Jurassic Park. It is genuinely a ritual. Um, I have done this now for such a long time, I don't remember not doing it, but every time a new Jurassic Park comes out, I usually watch the rest of them. Remind myself right. that The Lost World is not good every time. I have to remind Number two? Because <laughs> everyone's always <laughs> like, well, no, 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 Lost World's pretty good, pretty good. It's like, it ain't. It ain't. I'm sorry. But, um... Are we going to do a Jurassic World, a Jurassic Art, Jurassic Art? A arc? I'd be on board with that. That'd be fun, but... I would like to do that, because I haven't seen the old ones since I was but a wee lad. Mm-hmm. I fucking love the original. Oh, mwah, beautiful. Love it. Hug those dinosaurs. But, yeah, as they go on, it's just... It mean, is the only good one, isn't it? Pretty much, yeah. I'm, ch <laughs> I'm charmed by three. Two is like, eh. I, I find a lot of stuff in it very eh, but I like Jeff Goldblum. So. Um, yeah, I can't remember much about the third. I don't remember it like annoying me too much or anything. I I just three, I feel pretty neutral on it. The reason three calms me is because it's such a like, it's the it's the bad sequel we used to get. We're like, okay, Alan is back. He's stuck on an island, and there's a there super dinosaur, dinosaur, the Spinosaurus. Yeah. He's even better than the T-Rex, and he's got to escape yeah. him. And you're like, yeah, okay, all right, let's do it. That sounds so much just so cool. Like that kind of sequel. You know, the equivalent for Star Wars would have been Luke Skywalker has to destroy 17 Death Stars in his X-Wing. Can he do it? And we're all just like, oh my god, what is this? Oh <laughs> like, my gosh, but, I hope uh, Luke can do it. How nice it would have been to have had that instead of what I ended up with, though. Um. Uh, so yeah, I'll probably do that. Uh, we'll try and figure out a thing for recording it. Maybe we could do a Jurassic Arc. I like the idea, but we uh, at the same time, if we don't have the time, I'll probably just blast through the films and then prepare to do coverage of Dominion because I seriously doubt Colin Trevorrow is going to make a script that I love. Not very good at making Jurassic scripts, but I'm sure he's a very nice man. Was he making the, the that one or? I was under the impression he was. Isn't he? He's done the he first. He didn't make two, right? the. He did. No, he didn't make Fallen Kingdom. He didn't direct it. I thought he that wrote was... it. Uh oh, he did write it, and he is the writer director for Dominion. Yeah. Nah. <laughs> well. <laughs> well, boy, yeah, well. exciting stuff. I still absolutely would have happily seen his uh, Rise of Skywalker compared to JJ's, but um, uh, uh, yeah, I guess it would have been a different experience, different, yeah. you know. We we got three different perspectives on a on a whole trilogy, you know. That's that yields great results, I'm sure. I know that. Uh, yeah, I know, right? I know that this is insane, and it would never happen. There's so many reasons why it wouldn't happen. But imagine Rise of Skywalker was actually to release, but they say to Johnson. Abrams and Trevor, all of you make your third. We will give you the resources at different fight. times. Yeah, earn our love. You don't have, well, you don't even care about each other's productions. Just make a third version, and, and and who do you guys think would win? Who do you think would be the one that we'd score the highest? Uh, oh. between who are the three against that come again? JJ Abrams, oh, Colin Trevor, yeah. and Johnson, Ryan Johnson. Poor. Wrote what? Uh, well, I'm not as familiar with Colin Trevorrow. I don't think what movie he made Fallen Kingdom. Done? He wrote that. I mean, <laughs> ooh, he wrote Fallen Kingdom and made Jurassic World. Yeah, which is also shit. Oh wow, that is a good question. Um, uh, uh, ooh, I guess which one would be the would best? Be, I I suppose it might be a question because we've seen what JJ made. And it was horrific. Know, it was Ryan would subvert the fuck out of you. I could see Trevor giving us things we'd want to see. I don't know. I guess it might be a question of if TLJ gets a follow-up from the same director who made it, might it have been more cohesive as an ending, even if we all didn't like it? I think Colin Trevorrow's would be the best, because I feel like Ryan would that, trip on his own attempt to do something stylistic. And well, Collins would just be so simple, stupid that it wouldn't even like go up to a level where it destroys itself in a way. In terms of like maybe characters or lore, it doesn't seem like it'd be as much self damaging. Maybe, um, yeah, like but he I, might. Because I, 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 I guess to me, like the rise of Skywalker, it's like right. This is a J.J. Abrams story. Like it's so clear. Like I see what you're doing, and it's not working. Maybe maybe there would be some novelty 
having someone else come in and, and do that and make their own film. Yeah. Because with Fallen Kingdom, it's like everyone... If I, I, I think... Does, does Jurassic Park have characters anymore? Or is it just people running around? Well, that's the thing. This new one, they bring back the, the original trio, kind of. They're already mm -hmm. seen together in the trailer, which means they've done Maybe. more than the OT. Maybe. Sam Neill, Laura Dern. Yeah. Jeff Goldblum. Jeff Goldblum. I'm gonna have a cameo this time around. Yeah, yeah I was about to say, but I've I've been t I've been sold on Jeff Goldblum before, and <laughs> I was <laughs> horrifically, horrifically underdelivered. Um, the premise so, of well, this new movie we'll seems so stupid. Oh man, the dinosaurs might actually cause us to become extinct. Get out no. of here! Come on, no, really? fuck off! I have no, a gun. Would... Go away. Yeah, the, the, <laughs> the fact that films consistently underestimate our capabilities as a species is pretty frustrating. I'm waiting for them to show shooting at them and then the bullets bounce off their fucking skin or some yeah, shit. Oh no. As if, as if that's what would actually They're happen. All genetically modified. Yeah. All the, the, the zombies beat the army, army of the dead style, and you're no, like, I'm what? Sure, no, sure fuck sure off. Take on an AC-130. You know? Yeah. Like, pterodactyls can fly... How fly do, how, how high do planes fly? Like, 10 kilometers in the air? Like, I'm, I'm sure pterodactyls Higher than a there. dinosaur, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But in, and you'd kill, world, you'd kill pterodactyls with small arms. In the trailer, they get attacked by a pterodactyl in a plane. <laughs> but why would a pterodactyl... What the fuck? How was it gonna do? Beat its beak against it, metal? Yeah, I think that's what it does, kind of. Just jumps on the plane and hurts it. Goes peck peck, and then it bursts into flames. Oh, <laughs> oh it bursts into flames. And the good guys are on it, so it's no, fine. That's just <laughs> the pterodactyl entering phase two. They think yeah. that dinosaurs are like fantasy creatures from an MMO, yeah. and they have elemental powers, and they level up, and they have special moves. Dinosaurs are just big lizards. They're when animals. you kill them, they drop like a quit, like long swords and things. No, when, <laughs> you, when you kill them, they like they howl before. Ooh, a green to pair of trousers. Ooh, yeah. Oh, so how's the ring of rolling? Right Someone tell these Hollywood directors that armies can kill other armies. They're not going to lose to dinosaurs. No, we need to put velociraptors in the military. It's going to make us win the war. Well, yeah, like, as opposed to a dog that actually will listen to you. Yeah, dogs are <laughs> way better in war than a fucking velociraptor. It's so stupid. Yeah, because they're super dogs, useful tools, yeah. Horses are really useful as well mm -hmm. uh, in certain instances. Yeah, but cavalry yeah. had a purpose, absolutely. Remember they fucking you know, were like... In World War II, they used rats to... It's like, shut the fuck up! Shut up! Like, yeah, like a, <laughs> stop that, trying to justify... You ever, you ever try to real... shoot a rat? It's probably really hard. But like Little tiny rat, guys. It's, it's gonna help you in a battle, you know? Like, it's not gonna run out there. It's this pathetic yeah. attempt to be like, well, they've used edibles before, so it makes sense we're using velociraptors. Like, why did you write that? What is wrong with you? Mm -hmm. Did an animal write this script? <laughs> why not use war hippos? Hippos are very aggressive. They're the deadliest animal in Africa. That means they're it would perfect be funny, for though, war. Like a, a light of hippos, they'll charge. charge yeah. <laughs> Except all that would happen is they'd immediately turn around and start running to Eating the you. friendly. So they're like, oh no. Yeah. Instead of a five kilometer long tank column, I, you have a five kilometer long hippo yeah. line. That feels, that feels like a whole movie, Savannah Park, where it's just, you know, we're in the Savannah, we got Savannah animals. And I don't know, they genetically engineer like a lion, lion zebra, just something that never should have been made. This merger of species that is like an eldritch abomination. And then we have Chris Pratt as a hippo trainer, and he falls into the hippo pit. I and thought he's you were like, gonna. Hey, stay away. They're gonna say uh, Chris what? Pratt is hippo. That's just. <laughs> he's the voice. Well, Chris, of the hippo. Pr Chris Pratt is the voice of the hippo protagonist. <laughs> Goes up, who has to take <laughs> down the lion zebra? Sponsored by Verizon. Oh, I'm I'm enjoying the. I I think that I will really enjoy the Jurassic arc that we do because oh, I have boy. I have not seen the second or third movie since I was a little pupperino. A long time. I'm super interested to see them again and see how much they hold up or do not. Yeah. Ironically, Jurassic Park has aged very well. Yes, it has. 
Well, they can't seem to come up with a different theme. Every single movie is like, man, we shouldn't have done this. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. Maybe we should install thicker fences. Hmm. <laughs> nah. Imagine the revolutionary thought that there's a Jurassic Park movie where the park doesn't get overrun and it's just chill. You're like, well, this yeah. is it actually works. <laughs> yeah. No, you could make that. Oh, well, yeah, with right. like all this. Yeah. I mean, they it do just, that in the, the day in the life of the, like a zookeeper at Jurassic keeper. Park, they all the problems that might arise. Jurassic World. Yeah. The first, like, what, 10 minutes or so is like, hey, look, everything's so great. Woo. Yeah. That I guess humans forgot how to, like, concrete and metal. Oh, no. Man, how do these dinosaurs well. escape? A fucking old man who turns up in Fallen Kingdom and people were like, he's just like, he's like, I was totally friends with, I was Hammond's, Hammond's brother. I control everything now. And it's like, where the fuck were you with all the other movies? <laughs> and then people were like, have you not read the book? It's like, I don't care about the fucking book. It's not the movie. No read the, not not nobody has read the book. No one who <laughs> is excited about Jurassic Park movies can read. They didn't, oh, they like didn't mention him at all. <laughs> like, even if he was in the book, it's an adaptation, so we don't know whether or not... It, even if I read the book, that wouldn't tell me whether or not, like, he'd be in it, right? Yeah, you, it wouldn't tell you anything, really, because that's how adapt adaptations work, but... Yeah. It was just like, how do you not know about him? And I was like, hey, read the fucking book! The only yeah. Jurassic Park book I read was Jurassic Park really? by Michael Crichton. They then smashed his, um... His his amber stick. Uh, I really that's just me. indicative. That's just yeah. That's just that's just writing now in a nutshell. They like doing that. Don't we they? gotta yeah. yeah. We gotta destroy the old shit. Um, they think it, it's I, symbolic, but not in the way that they think. It doesn't make us kill, go. Ooh. It makes us go. Uh, class, right? What was that? That's. You got, that's such a great quote, kill the past. It's so indicative of like the attitude in that well, film, anyway. People often say, yeah, like, like, well, no, the film, like... the film was about how he was wrong. And it's like, no, the film was about fuck the past and whatever future, like, make your own way or something. That was kind of like what Kylo ends up saying, wasn't it? I'm telling you, the theme like... wouldn't work if there were stronger fences. So I think yeah. Kill the past. Fuck it if you have to. Feed the Velociraptors. They go and annoy me. They're getting upset. <laughs> except they're actually sweet if you... They're like the rank. Oh, they're gonna pull the Rancor where actually they're really... Oh, yeah! Velociraptors are actually really sweet or something. As long Rank as you're nice to yeah, them. They're, they're emotionally... Creatures. Yeah, they're emotionally right. complex creatures. I mean, real-life Velociraptors probably were, like, a little more interesting. <laughs> but, uh... I... It's just controversial to say that I definitely prefer like the way that Velociraptors is in, in real life with the feathers. Yeah, they look cooler. They look like colorful and interesting, and yeah. I like the realistic take on yeah, these they're gonna yeah, some of these fuckers are gonna survive and become birds one day, and yeah. they share wow. a lot of traits. So, Kurz Gazox made a really great video where they uh, it, the whole video was essentially hmm, what what do dinosaurs what would they have actually looked like because it's very it's kind of hard for us to figure that out just from fossil records um and that a lot of our interpretation of dinosaurs is based on the very reptile uh minimalistic sort of imagery that was produced in like the early 20th century yeah um mm -hmm. but but you look at animals today it, like if you just took their skeleton you wouldn't get a lot of what they actually are so and plus, things that we figured out about, like impressions of feathers on bones and stuff like that, they probably were really colorful. Yeah, you could you could learn a lot uh, from bones and stuff, but you never know what else we don't know. I guess you never know what you don't know. Yeah, I mean, if well, I mean, like if if you you guys ever see a bird without feathers, and you're like, oh, okay, yeah, it's a dinosaur. Yeah, it's I, it's just uh, I guess it's it's just always going to be really difficult because we're trying to figure out what animals that lived more than sixty five. Man, animals that lived more than sixty five million years ago. We're trying to figure out what they look like, <laughs> you know. And it's... we've come probably close ish, maybe by now. Uh, I think we're getting there. Seems like we're getting better and better at figuring these things out, but there's still probably a ton that we'll never be able to figure out. We'll just keep learning more and more and more. Keep on trucking humanity. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, hi, Mola. Would you recommend Elden Ring to someone new to the Souls franchise, or would you say another part is a better starting point? 
So, first of all, hello, and I still think Dark Souls is the best place to start, followed up by Dark Souls 3, followed up by Bloodborne, followed up by probably Elden Ring. Stay away from Dark Souls 2, okay? Not safe. Um, but, I, you know, taking Elden Ring first, I don't know, man. The As you may have seen, there's a lot of people playing it as their first thing, or a game know. that... There are people who are like, I hated Dark Souls, and I hated Bloodborne, but I'll give this a try. I hate this. It's like, yeah, yeah, that's, that, line, that line's up. So, um... <laughs> no Dark Souls 2? I mean, it's just, as, as Reshion just said, big gay. Big gay. But, um, you know, I feel like it might work for you as a first try. Have a look at some people playing it. See, see what you think. Uh, you know, it might fit your preferences, but it also might not. Um, enjoy the money. Thank you very much. Oh, I shall. Thank you. Thank you. I did not know the website. You earned the money through entertainment. Thank you, Mola slash Mula High Rags. Hello to you. I don't know what they're referring to exactly, but no Me problem. Neither. Um, Fringy, I'd like people to forget about the goo so they stop talking about it. Also, Fringy keeps talking about the non-existent goo. I only yeah, talk Fringy. about it when people ask about it. Yeah, he's the randomly bring it up usually prompted well i mean there's our, our calls where he talks about it all the time that's yeah but that's not live so different oh all right um efap 170 at 633 28 full context at 632 44 rags they literally butchered every character you even doubled down on the hyperbole you've become the very monster you swore to destroy p.s god bless auto subtitles uh, I remember this. This is probably a follow-up from the other one we had before. Uh, where I said they literally butchered characters. Did yeah. I joke? I wonder. If, did I jokingly say that I uh, like when, when literally when I knew it wasn't literally, but I said yes, I mean literally as a joke because it wasn't you, actually literally. I'm guessing you. I'm not sure. May have slipped. May have slipped. Oh. Know, that, that could be GG because you're not allowed to say Come literally on. to not mean literally. That's the primary rule. That's true. That four rule. Yeah, I'm not gonna let that one go. Uh, Rags, if you would like to know why rita, uh, I mean linguists insist on allowing literally to mean figuratively, look up linguistic prescriptivism on Wikipedia, as that is their primary Wait. counter argument. IMO, it's kind of poopy, but I'm running out of character, and then they got cut off. Oh no! Well, linguistic prescriptivism can go well, fuck itself. I'm assuming it, it would have something to do with the fact that it's just like, that's just how people use it, and so the word is describing how it's used, and it's just like, yeah, but we should discourage people to use it that way, because it gets fucking confusing, that's all. Yeah, I, I don't want a word to unironically mean it's opposite. I feel like... I feel like it's a decent standard to have. Hey, you massive. Thanks for the hours upon hours of entertainment. Long man good. Oh, that's nice. I'm sure it applies you. to you guys, too. Probably. I'll assume that it does. They're all longmans. All right. So those are Streamlabs. Next up oh. will be oh. the uh, previous catch-up we did. Super Chats. All right, we're going to catch up with them now. Here we go. Uh, did you guys see the Create Unknown podcast with Smiling Friends, guys? Also, High Rags. Hi. No, I didn't. Um, I'm I a little bit of it. Yeah, I'm like halfway through it. I want to finish it, but it's in my to watch stuff. But it's uh, very, very cool. Um, hey, Mr. Long, please watch Pig and tell us what you think. Ask your friends too, as I'm sure they'll recommend it if they've seen it. I've heard nothing but recommendations for Pig. Uh, I don't know if you guys. Me heard too. Of it. I've heard of it. Yeah, I've heard it's quite yeah uh, good. I think I have. It seems like a good one, yeah. Nicholas Cage is up to some some stuff, but uh, I do want to watch it. Yeah, Nicolas Elden Cage Ring is another movie coming out where he plays Nicholas Cage. Oh yeah, I want to see that one too. Elden Ring EFAP, uh, possibly, possibly, very very possible, blubbly, especially okay. if Theo's running up some controversial opinions. Yeah, but I got to get them gaming conversations happening. Has uh, has John been playing Elden Ring by any chance? You know. Oh. What do he think? I don't no know. Idea. I do not know. Also, when's the vid coming out? Well, two days. Uh -huh. Two days. 
close, yet so far away. Uh, the Lost Duel, starring Martian Man, Kylo Ren, and Ray's Mum, was a great watch. I recommend it. Wait, Ray's Mum? Ray's Mum was a filthy junk trader. <laughs> well, no, she, she... Which which film you going by? Because she was, uh... The, the Jedi... See, there's this thing called being an actor, where you portray different people, depending on the project. Well, no, I mean, uh... Ray's okay. Mom. Ray's the character for each. That's not the actress. Yeah, Ray is Ray is the protagonist of the Star Wars, Star Wars sequels, sequel yeah. trilogy. Yeah, you know, no, I know that. Yeah, so Ray's mum is two different people depending on which continuity you run with, which is the filthy junk trader or Palpatine's. Was it Palpatine's daughter or Palpatine's son? Which one was? Well, the Ray's was mom the daughter, would have right? been Palpatine's yeah. daughter, I think. Yes, I think that was what it was. Well, there you go. She was. Not quite a filthy for the, junk trader, For the sake eh? of the joke, yes, that is, that's who she was. To which one it was. Um, Scott's comments on why it bombed are hilarious. Oh, he's, he's just joined the crew. He's like, because today about superheroes and lasers, everyone hates it. And it's like, oh, no. Um, look, why what bombed, sorry? Uh, the Last Duel, which, of which, by the way, I haven't seen it, but I'm sure it's good. It's uh, just... Well, I guess um, it is kind of, because when I saw Batman last night, uh, the three trailers that played were all for superhero things. Uh, there were no trailers for non-superhero films. Oh, oh. I don't know that that, oh. like... Uh, well, no, I'm just saying that it's interesting. No, I'm not saying uh, you're saying anything. Uh, yeah. The uh, reality here is just that, like, it's, it's the good old market, right? Like, it, it bends to the will of the people. Like, so what does that mean, then? It's like, I don't know. It probably well, means that... People well, yeah, buy superhero shit, so they'll make superhero shit. I think yeah. the thing is, is what what is going to be you you can't really like talk someone out of having, and this is this is like a whole market that you're kind of trying to tell them. Can you please not watch superhero films? It's just <laughs> not going to work. It's not, like, that's, that's what I mean. The solution can't be that. Like that that. This, the be solution has else. to be. I guess the problem is I don't I don't know what it is because, like. When Marvel's churning out so much stuff every year, and now Warner Brothers and DC, they're also making, like, they got, because one of the trails that played was like, hey, we've got, like, four movies coming out this year. <laughs> oh, my God, there's so many movies. Um, I don't know, how do, you, how do you compete? Especially when, um, especially when the model for, like, the MCU feeds people into the next project. Oh, yeah. They're... And especially when you keep being able to attract, like, A-list talent, you can get whoever you want, essentially, for these films. And when so many um, idiots eat it up, it's like it's the perfect storm. It's, it's kind of nuts, like because they they've cultivated this. Obviously, they they're looking to make it like this way, and so um, yeah. The complaints, I just like, I do immediately want to jump to like, so what is the solution? It's like, well, it ain't gonna be some kind of crazy fucking. I'm from the government to be like, no more superhero no movies. More superhero <laughs> movies. So yeah. like, what would it be? It's like I don't know. I guess we just have to. I think, do, um, I think trends come and go. I feel like focusing on superhero films misses... Because, you know, like, Fast and the Furious at this point might as well be, like, in that category of a franchise that's, like, a big bombastic action thing mm -hmm. that you can keep making sequels for. And that makes, like, a billion dollars every time it comes out. Like, And I'm pretty sure there are other ones, too, that I'm, I'm blanking on right now that fit that mold. And I don't know, every studio wants franchises. All of them want him, um, because they're just a really safe investment. And like, would you All say right. even with the pandemic, are we at? Where was the superheroes like fanaticism peaking, or are we still not even necessarily uh, there yet? Well, I mean, Endgame obviously made a ton of money, but like, Sp No Way Home made a ton of money too. So I think No Way Home basically said like. Oh, you think this was over? It isn't. It's just not. <laughs> it's 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 not over, and it never, never will be. Never over. And uh, I wouldn't be surprised if Batman makes you a lot of money too. Like, I've noticed people asking me what I think about it. Oh boy. Well, um, I suppose we can we can opt in for getting some very spoiler-free, fringy thoughts on the Batman, if everybody's yeah. on board. Uh, I'm fine with that. It's up to him. Sure. Uh. Yeah, I I really enjoyed it. I need to think about it though a bit mm -hmm. uh, before I can fully say what my conclusion is. I find hmm. that in general, 
it's always worth sitting on a film for a little bit and yeah. uh just mulling over what happened because uh i think i think like if you immediately you know yeah just like slow it down a bit and think about it i guess uh all the non-controversial that everybody's going to agree on like from a production and filmmaking standpoint it's pretty like fantastic um it looks, looks like amazing it, yeah. it sounds awesome the soundtrack is phenomenal the acting is great there's like a lot of really cool choices in terms of presentation um i, I it, it's it's real it's real nice to go see a superhero film that was clearly someone had an idea for a story they wanted to tell and a vision that they had and they they tried to execute on it it's not just I, like next sludge thing it's definitely not sludge um it's absolutely not sludge it's clearly it's clearly a labor of love and the product of like a story that people wanted to tell uh and a vision for like a world that they wanted to cultivate um and yeah i really enjoyed it but i still need to think about it a bit before i can say what i really i think overall i look forward to talking about it with you lads <gasps> high top said he oh. cried three times three all right wow all right. well yeah um <laughs> i'll be seeing it in two days um Ragu, you seen it around then or uh yeah two days march 4th is when it opens here i think it opens tomorrow for britain cool um yeah i think everybody's getting in there Every, everybody's pretty excited for it definitely and it's, it's not even whether or not it's like a film that the public really really want to see or not i just mean like internet discourse you're definitely gonna want to see batman because that's gonna be what everyone's gonna talk about elden ring had its week okay i i, I will say i am like i am curious to see what the general reaction is gonna be uh for this one i uh mm -hmm. I am curious about that because I would say that it is different from all of the other Batman films. Um, it's definitely got a focus in a certain direction that a lot of the other films haven't had. Uh, but that would be given too much away, I think, to talk about it. So we'll leave it at that for now. I did really enjoy it, though. Wait. Uh, every time I type in Mauler on YouTube, I'm always greeted with ScarJo and Palpy's funny faces. There you go. That's nice. Give you a little for you. <laughs> Enter into a vid shift. Uh, could y'all do an impression of 3D Squelton? Um, I guess he's like, um, boo-hoo, boo-hoo, uh, what does Squelton say? What does he even want? I can't remember. He wants to learn how to use balloons or something. <laughs> I have no idea. 3D Squelton, do you, you, you remember 3D Squelton, though? No, I, I, I don't. Smiling Friends. I, I, I recall him from Smiling Friends, but I'm just not familiar enough with him Wait. to do an impression. He's in the Renaissance Man episode. Wait, was he... Sorry, 3D Squelton. I'm... <laughs> Wait. It sounds like I'm making it up, but it's true. Like... <laughs> <laughs> Wait. Oh, yeah, 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 he was like the 3D lies. guy, yeah. That's right, I remember him now, yeah. <laughs> oh, shit, so, someone just said, like, Wall is still playing Elden Ring. It's like, I left it open. Let me close that. Oh. There's no reason for my PC to be working to maintain Elden Mm-hmm. 3D Squelton hates, uh, arbitrary loadings of games. <laughs> When is Smiley Friends season 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10? What the fuck? Hmm. Yeah, we're all 10,000 episodes. Same for Arcane. What the fuck? Hmm? Gibby. Mm hmm. Okie dokie. Uh. Hi, my favorite N word kill streamers. Here's some money. For oh, what's that? As people that talk about this seem to not talk about him. His favorite was my favorite was Chud Logic who went Mauler, Rags, and this guy when pointing at Fringy's picture. Yeah, nobody knows who I am. <laughs> <laughs> that must be nice. To be fair, yeah, it it's sense. partially tied because myself and Rags have a bit of fame, but we also have a lot of infamy. Like, mm -hmm. oh, that fucking Some of that is even deserved. Says, yeah, well, like, we, we, we've earned plenty of it, right? Like, I once said that a movie was bad. Oh, shit. Yeah. 
That's sorry, not sorry about like I, I bringing it up is harsh. You know, it's a very controversial event, but um, I'm gonna do it again one day. I'm sure of it. When that happened, the whole world trembled. Literally, yeah. even even the world. He was like, "Oh, oh no, I don't like that. I'm scared." A little sad face. He he had a look. Uh, I I suppose a little sad face on a planet. I wonder how small that would be. <laughs> like. And how could it be seen from space? The planet's a little small face. Hmm. Maybe the continents would move to match his facial expression. I feel like that'd be rough for the people living on him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They're just like fucking. As Lego. the whole planet, everything's getting destroyed. <laughs> everything's falling down. Uh, I wish your planet wasn't so expressive. Yeah. Hi, Rags. It's. Ravior, ah. Ravior, Ravior Stygian again. I'm still blocked and it makes me feel the big sads. Oh, I, sorry, I couldn't find. Ra, um. I can post the name of. Oh, okay. Okay, I gotcha. All right. Okay, I gotcha. Rex, can you say. Oh, oh. This I've got one too. It is. So I've got to say, come no. with me. Come with me to the Australian Statue of Liberty. And you got one too. Okay, Jay. I think we need Mahler. Use this. Perfect. Hi, Rags. Thank you all. Oh yeah, you bet. Yeah. Uh, Y'all find it strange that Heimerdinger never checked out the Undercity in several centuries. So, we're supposed to believe that he's just been so busy that he's had an assumption about what goes on there, and it's just, he's never looked into it. Which, I can believe if you're busy with science constantly, and then a bit of politics, and then mainly the city you're taking care of, and you just sort of like, oh well, yeah, there's that other area that's like, mm. I um, can absolutely believe it, because I've met people who have lived in the same place for their whole life, who haven't seen significant portions of it. Some people don't um, want to travel. They just flat, yeah, they just don't, don't, they don't travel. have an interest in they it. They don't want to travel. Circle. Yeah. yeah. I find I mean, it baffling, obviously. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. And obviously the Shimmer but development was within the last seven years of uh, Silgo having taken over. That's going to be a gradual mm -hmm. thing. And, um, and I guess it's also, yeah, a matter of, like, when you think, just because he lives for a long time, like, his perception of time in terms of, you know, relative, it might, uh, it might whiz by real quick in a sense. Yeah, you, I'm sure he knew the Undercity wasn't fantastic, right? He probably knew yeah. that it was in disrepair, let's put it that way, but I don't think he understood just how bad it is there. Yeah, and I guess it would be if, did he ever have a reason that he felt he needed to go there? Um, especially if, 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 if he has a false impression of what that place is. I actually got, um, recommended, I, I think he put out a video recently, the same guy we covered with that, and it was like, uh, the Vika is the anti-Vi, and I'm like, I'm, I'm right, I'm gonna... The so Vika <laughs> is the anti-Vi. I don't even, I don't know, I'm fine. I'm, okay, right. I'll watch something else. Um... Are we not going to mention the little kid falling a great height onto pavement after getting shot, but still somehow alive for a few seconds? Uh, I was gonna bring that up, that was actually a note I had, but he dies literally like seconds after, so it doesn't really change it's anything. It's not consequential, it's but, just yeah, you, odd. He falls a significant fucking way after getting hit with yeah. Jace's like magical gun. I don't know how yeah. he was alive long enough for Jace and Vi to get all the way down there and then to see him. And honestly... I imagine they made that choice so that they can have Jay see him, you know, go from living to dead. When, to be honest with you, him just being dead, like it's the same thing. I don't see. I don't see why that would. Uh, you yeah, know, it wouldn't have changed anything really. It just helps it hit a little harder. Uh, what do you think Vi and Jinx's relationship will be like in season two? Do you think Jinx will be the big bad of the season? Yeah, I don't. I don't, I don't think she'll be like. I, I seriously think we're going to be getting a, a new Silco type. Uh, well, maybe it Jinx... will be Savika. Yeah, like, I could see Savika taking over, but I wouldn't even assume that they'll make her the main antagonist. I presume someone from Noxus is going to get involved. Noxus? Yeah. I guess Hopefully it would be Swain. that I, I think that uh, the relationship will be more antagonistic in the second season. 
Um, but yeah, uh, I wouldn't be shocked. I think we talked about this at some point, but uh, that Jinx will end up a bit of a wild card, and that she might get to a point where she's just looking to uh, find a way to be extinguished. Let's put it that way. Mm -hmm. Just um, burning it at both ends, sort of thing, not knowing what she should do next. Uh, in Arcane's intro, Silco's purple color changes to match Vanda's green color right at the last frame, maybe implying he understands Vanda now. Maybe. Mm. maybe. Um, I think Jinx's story ends with her dying. I, I think that's very reasonable to assume. I She's, think uh, so. Yeah. The time bomb in many ways. Uh, Australian animal of the day, frog mouth bird science based a sorry what they they've they've they need that to... sounds made up. <laughs> I think what they want to say is frog mouth bird. Oh, um, this is all I fucked. can't look it up right now. So, I rags, can. you have to. Sorry, frog no, mouth bird. Oh my god! I need to see. Let me see. Oh, these guys. Yeah, I okay. The frog mouth bird. Kind of funny, right? Gob's just fucking around. He's like, what if I... <laughs> <laughs> this is like someone... It's like... This looks like someone who attempted to draw a bird. <laughs> yeah. And they're like, why does Like, draw a bird pretty? from memory. But I'm not good uh, at drawing, yeah, and I have a bad nice memory. Looking... Yeah, it's literally... That's just one nice looking bird. Why does a mug look like that? <laughs> 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 yeah, some funny oh looking God. creatures. Oh, look at him. <laughs> um, science based animal of the day. Esopian... Science based? What even is this? Oh, hang on, I'll get. I'll, I'll throw this Is this no... way more scientific than the frog mouth bird? Eosapien, I think. And, uh. What the hell? For a rendition of the oh, that's definitely a uh, science based. Alien, oh, I it's suppose. not a real, oh, like a science fiction, yeah, or okay, yeah, that's that cool. Illustration, it's a weird yeah. critter, very strange. Wouldn't be surprised if I saw that in Dark Souls. I would be shocked if I saw that in Dark Souls. That's good because there's lots of shocking things in Dark Souls. Looks like a something from Doom. Yeah. Um, boom, boom. Oh, and then animal of the day, mud skipper. Oh, just mud skipper, right? I feel like I've heard of a mud skipper before. Let me see. Yeah, I had. You have heard of these? Yeah. You see it, and you'll be like, "Oh yeah." Oh yeah, that's right. They they like they jump around on the fish that walk on land. That's right. Skip on the mud. Yeah. I think that has something to do with why they named that. Probably I, I not. It's probably just coincidental. A good thing. <laughs> yeah. Useful link. That's, is that a link from Ewin Gaming? Uh, probably, yeah. They're probably. And then when you find a second Mud Skipper, you just have to call it Mud Skipper Two. And then Animal of the Day, Tully Monster. Tully Monster, the Animal of the Day. Tully Monster, Tully Monster. Oh, apparently it's called Tully Monstrum. That's the name of it. Hi. But I guess people Let colloquially call it Tully Monster. And is this thing real? This looks not real. And was it? Wasn't this the one? Oh, it was a prehistoric like animal. The... Right, right, right. Uh, wow. Hell. There's a lot of renditions what of a... this one. I'm trying to get you guys. Yeah, I'm. I'm looking at the Google images is... here. That is an okay. odd critter. This is a uh, spore <laughs> creature. This is yeah, a spore. spore. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, spore. Remember spore? I remember spore. If I actually know what spore, remember? There was. I would it... be tempted to be mm. like, check out my spore creature, everybody. And then people were like, oh, that was kind of funny. And it's like, no, actually, it's I commissioned real. <laughs> an artist to draw my OC. I just it's got really sad monster. now thinking about the fact that Maxis doesn't exist anymore. Like, I, I just had a wave of sadness thinking about that. You'll be okay. God, oh man, remember Maxis? Remember The Sims and SimCity and SimTower? SimCopter? 
Remember all of the cool games that they made? And then they, they made SimCity 2013, and that was the end. Oh, man. Remember when that was, like, the height of controversy for, like, always online, you know, games? And now Yeah, why is this game always thing. online? It can't work. It can't connect to servers. It can't it do all this shit. It's entirely designed to play online, so you have these really small cities. You can't have a self-sufficient city because every city needs to trade in a network of other cities. And that was, like... Because that's a great... Because that's what players want. To not well, build yeah, a self-sufficient have... city. <laughs> that's would... what sim players love. Would sim compare... players love to make cities that are reliant on other cities. I mean, it, it really set up city skylines to become, like, the, the city builder of choice. That game is just way bigger, more versatile. Um, especially with all of the DLC and mod support. That's, like, it's a really great city builder. I remember the, Sim City, like one of the problems with it was that the the cities were really small; they couldn't get very big. Like you'd fill up the area very quickly. In City Skylines, you could just keep expanding and expanding. But I just remember that was like the height of controversy in terms of Always Online. But now we're at the point where Always Online is a very common uh, thing. Yeah. You guys familiar with someone named Wendigoon? No. Windagoon? No. Nope. Hi, Rags. Hello! Oi, Mewshly. Did you know that when Caitlyn gives Vi the Shimmer Potion in Episode 6, Vi briefly hallucinates her as her mother? Yeah, she has the purple hair. And we saw her with purple hair in the prologue. The clearest image you get of what Vi's mum looks like. Or looked like, rather. Uh, hi, Rags. Hello! And Mola, hello. And Metal, and Fringy the Great King. Oh, <laughs> how, how kind of you. Uh, well, okay, so this is your full title, sorry. Fringy the Great King, the Imperishable, Kemrikara, the Great King of Nehekara, King of Kings, Opener of the Way, Wielder of the Divine Flame, Punisher of Nomads. Man, that's, uh, imagine if that was the name of a Dark Souls boss and you had to put all that on the screen. <laughs> I feel like it might not fit. Dark Souls. That's a scroll. <laughs> like, that was yeah. like, around a big thing. Dark Scrolls. Oh. Apparently um, it's a Warhammer reference. Oh yeah, because it goes on. The Great Unifier, oh, Commander man. of the Golden Legion, Sacred of Appearance, Bringer of Light, Father of Hawks, Builder of Cities, Protector of the Two Worlds, Keeper of the Hours, Choose... What? Oh, there's a third. Chosen <laughs> of uh, Petra? I'm not sure. High Steward of the what Horizon. Sailor of the Great Vitae. Sentinel of the Two Realms. The Undisputed Begetter of the Begot. So how, how many the faithless this spread across? Carrion, Feeder, and many, many more. Those three super chats they managed to get that out in. Uh, oh, that's yeah. quite that guy. What a very impressive person to have all of those titles, you know? Yeah, I was gonna so say, they must have done, done a lot of stuff. That's quite the resume. Isn't it? Money. Quite the resume. Dude, yeah, yeah no, I feel I feel bad for the the guy's son. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, bald. how could he ever live up to that? I did that in Game of Thrones with Elise, who's like is the great Khaleesi, the mother of dragons, the breaker of... She's like, shut the fuck up! No one cares! Uh, this just has a peace symbol with some wine. Oh, boy. Will you cover Grace Randolph ranking the arcane characters? She said Vandal wasn't really a father figure to Vi and Powder, and she lusts after Jace. She lusts after Jace? Well, that's understandable. That's not even a I surprise, think we... really. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I... Yeah. Have you seen the man? As for, um, Vanda wasn't really a father figure, but, like, he just was, so, like, what That's an interesting take that I'm not interested in exploring. <laughs> yeah, I, I was gonna say, like, there's not much know? to do with that, because I'd just be like, well, so he is. I mean, define father figure is. for me and tell me how he doesn't satisfy it, you know, like, how. Maybe... Hmm. 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 Well, your mic is too low. I swear to God, if it's been lowered again, I'm gonna kill everything. Wow, that. Oh. Where are you? 
Recording, microphone, property, level. It's at 35. It's supposed to be at like 65. Or whatever the hell I moved it to last time. Uh -huh. Why does it keep. We did the thing last time that you mentioned to me, right? Allow applications to take exclusive control. Yeah, that's still off. So why There's the hell off. is it going down? Is Discord. Do you have it set to automatic game control? Uh, is that a set on Discord, you mean? Yes. In that case, if you can remind me to, to have a look at that, um, cause fuck me, that is annoying. Yeah. Stop lowering me, computer. Mola, too loud. Um, is it too loud? Not for me, I don't think. Oh yeah, I guess I should increase for you guys too, because I was doing that. Um, you don't have to increase it for me, it's fine. Not too loud, no problems. Machines are taking over. Never too loud. Too hot, it's fine. Sounds better, sounds fine, it's perfect. Okay, good. Seems like we're all right. Remember when that was... Remember when that was untainted? I don't, really. <laughs> what I was going to say. Terminator 3 came out when I was pretty young. So. Okay, that's what it was. I... I thought so. Uh, do you not recognize uh, something? I, I'm sure. I I, I, I recognize the thing, but your bam, humming bam. was. You know. Well, so I was about to comment on that. I, I'm, I feel like I've mentioned it before. We've talked about it. Battlefield and Terminator have a very similar, like, sort of, uh, I guess, main little uh, thing. Because Battlefields is it, uh, Terminators is da dun dun da dun, dun, and Battlefields is da dun dun da dun, dun dun. They're very yeah. similar. Yeah, that little um, thing is part of, yeah. I like them both, it's just interesting that they're so similar. There's probably um, a lot of connections like that with different soundtracks and stuff and pieces of them. Well, it's, certain things work, right? So it's yeah. not surprising that certain things... And I, I mean, both, like Battlefield's little da-dum-dum is, is always been really cool. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, they put a lot mm -hmm. of emphasis on, on it lately, but nobody really talks about Battlefield anymore, do they? <laughs> I well, do. not for any good reason. Only like ninety. They've lost ninety six percent of their players. <laughs> oh, like, we've all been no. there. We've all lost that many players. That's fine. Well, I mean, Halo's already lost what, like ninety ninety percent of its players. Oh man. Yeah, and remember that they're, they're not doing a Call of Duty next year because Vanguard underperformed. Um, Honestly, I mean, I like if it. I'm a okay with only getting a Call of Duty every two oh, years because I'm like, I'm oh, maybe it'll be good. Well, it seems sure. like the last few Call of Duties have been because, from what I understand, you had Modern Warfare in 2019. Uh, 2020 was meant to be the sledgehammer game, but that whole studio, like, they lost a lot of leadership, and uh, their 2020 game got delayed to 2021. And so Treyarch then had to make the 2020 Call of Duty game, so they only had, like, two years to make it. Uh, and then Vanguard came out, and that was also, like, not really... There was clearly problems on the development of that game. Because, like, there's so much... There are so many parts of that game that are, like, clearly ripped directly from the 2019 engine, like, for Modern Warfare. Um, mm -hmm. And it didn't do very well. So, yeah, it seems like they've reached the point of, oh, like, the engine that we've created to just pump these out is starting to wear down. Um, Maybe we need to make these larger, super feature-rich games that people know will have a longevity of two years of development and support. Instead of next the year, there'll be a new the, one. Fuck it. Well, it seems like um, the the longevity is now Warzone. Um, like that's the because uh, mm. all of the games. Uh, yeah, that's right. All yeah. of the games are part of Warzone, and I'm pretty sure that this year it's not just Modern Warfare Two, but it's also going to be like Warzone Two. They make they make a lot of money on Warzone. Like yeah, I I, I feel like it feels like um keep repeating it, but like they made like a billion dollars off of off of just Modern Warfare in a year, a billion dollars. Um, I don't know that there's any there's not many things that make that much money, uh, except for like live service games. So certainly not any like single player games are making that much money, except for like a Rockstar game. But even then, Rockstar makes most of their money online now. Seems that way, anyway. 
Uh, COD's been through a couple of ups and downs in the past. I'm sure maybe one point it'll come out with one that we all go, Whoa, that one was pretty cool. We all kind of liked Modern Warfare. I did, anyway. Yeah, I, I kind it. of. I kind of did. It, it felt like a, um, you know, a moment felt of like, like cared. Huh. Cause we all, yeah, we all yeah. gave it a good play, which I hadn't done for so long for COD, but, uh... Likewise, but I haven't yeah. given any of the other ones a play since. <laughs> yeah, just... yeah, I don't know, maybe they'll do something at some point and make us all go, ooh. Well, yeah, I just, I, I guess... don't want Call of Duty to, cause it's like the junk food of video games. It's Kinda, the, it's yeah. the sh junk food shooter, and I don't want it to be, you know? Mm. I want it to be like a cool burger and fries kind of thing where it's for everybody and everyone could, you know, kind of play it, but it's good. Right. But yeah, like it, like it used to be like back in the good old days, like, like COD 4 or Modern Warfare 2. I, I will say, though, because like I get the impression that the next one is going to lean hardcore into Modern Warfare 2 nostalgia. Um, mm. That's going to be hard for me to ignore. <laughs> like that game is probably going to have like Ghost and Soap and uh, all those guys. Task Force One for One. Oh boy, be careful, you know. <laughs> uh, do you plan to release the Bly Manor EFAP someday? Yep. We're just gonna have to. There's so many things you have no idea. EFAP has literally done like one percent of the things it wants to do. Okay, we got we got so many <laughs> things. Yeah, we are one percent. So many things, so many, so little time. But um, so many things on the way. I can't wait. It's going to be great. But yes, that's on the way. Eventually. One day. Maybe. Yes. 100%. Maybe. Maybe. Um, <laughs> good day, everyone. Also, hi, Rags. Hi. Good day. Uh, I require Mola to say bread angrily. Bread. There you there go. You go. Yeah. Hope that was everything you wanted. <laughs> Um, is the video? It's not gonna... often that one gets upset at bread. Bread's a very it seems like a very inoffensive yeah. sort of you know food. It's item in general. Is the video you're working on releasing next week? It's releasing two days. So no, this week now, but probably next week when that was sent. Maybe I can't remember. Uh, Fringy sent some emus to emus to help you Ukraine. I'm gonna I'm gonna guess not. Uh, EFAP guess, yeah. Fodoro video called "In Defense of Gaston." Oh, do you mean "In Defense of Gaston"? EFAP Fodder video they probably meant. Maybe I don't know. Um, in defense of I'd Gaston. have to rewatch the movie. Yeah, uh, I, I think we're gonna do. My perspective on also, Gaston. which which one, right? Like the the original or the remake? Well, I I want us to do a back to back EFAP of those, like we did for Dalmatians. Um, uh, we, uh, man, there's gonna be so <laughs> many of them. I know. So many of these remakes. Can we? Stop we'll get through a lot of them eventually, probably. People fucking love um, the Dalmatians one. Well, I guess it's just how many of them are gonna be like. I, I get the impression that they're not all going to be, like, as horrible as Cruella. But I, I would like imagine a, so, yeah. You yeah. know, like, I, I doubt Cruella that, was I doubt that bad. Aladdin is going to be, like, as bad as, as Cruella. Dude, the Snow White Cruella one, was special. That's going to be freaking Galgamot as the evil yeah. queen. It's going to be awful. Yeah, yeah the, the whole, you know, dwarves are bad, and the thing, it's, it's all going to... It's got all the makings of the... Oh! Oh God. Shadow Warrior 3 came out. Yes, did you guys know this? I, and they changed Lo Wang's voice actor because he wasn't Asian before. Right. And this and, and so they, they they got rid of the old voice actor who was really good. Like and they replaced I, I don't him understand Asian. that with the voice acting. That always feels like a weird like you know, like does anybody care that Kratos isn't voiced by a Greek person? <laughs> he has a cool voice, you know. Well, both both versions of the character have a cool voice. Well, so what's, I'm happy well, with those choices. What's the color of the person who voices Kratos? Well, I'm, they were both so black, Kratos I think, right? Both have been played you can't by, say yeah. shit. Well, I, nobody can because Kratos is technically you can't white, take white. A, He's ash white. He's literally. Yeah, but you can't. But if the voice white. actor is black, you can't say shit. 
Well, but but I guess what it says is ideally, I we don't care, right? Like whoever you and I don't care, yeah. But the, the that's the voice that is uh, suits the character. Yeah, and to be fair, I love both the the voices. I was actually sad to find out yeah, that yeah. they'd recast him, and then I heard the new cast. I was like, okay, that was really fucking good. So I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I've, and uh, Phil Lamar played Samurai Jack. Yeah, I mean, it's like I don't, I don't, I just like cool voices wherever they come from and it seems like especially with voice acting that that's presumably an area where it's like well it's no boundless right like we can have anybody ideally play any character um yeah okay is i get i thought we were past the age of oh sorry uh we're firing you because you're not the right race oh and someone oh. mentioned the allison brew on on bojack it's like yeah that was uh yeah do you remember that? The I think she said that, like, in hindsight, that she shouldn't have taken the role. That's so stupid. Should have been played by a Vietnamese actress. Um, was Bojack uh, voiced by a horse? <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, and also, yeah, I mentioned that uh, it's... Oh, I always blank on his name, because Cleveland is, voice, is voiced by white... <coughs> Mike Henry, <coughs> isn't it? Mike Henry, that's right, yeah. Yeah. Um, but then I guess, and then of course we had the Apu thing as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah there's yeah. been I, plenty I, I of just, them. I don't know. It feels like, um... <coughs> yeah. Uh, Shadow Warrior 3 is actually, uh, it came out today, Mar or not today, it came out March 1st. Uh, 64% positive, so it's definitely, hmm. 64, yeah, that's uh, <laughs> a bit worrying. Mm. I By the way, changed. play Shadow Warrior 1 and Shadow Warrior 2. I played a bit of Shadow Warrior 2. That was fun. Yes, yeah, they, they are fun games. I always find uh, it interesting to think about the, you know, recut. <coughs> Damn, I'm struggling here with this cough. Um, recasting voices. Um, like, if it, it feels like sometimes the ease with which a voice can get recast is uh, odd. Considering that the voice is like the strongest thing you can latch onto for a for a, like an animated or a digital character, it's doubly bizarre coming from Shadow Warrior as a series, which is Shadow Warrior about being. Edgy. It's very edgy and irreverent and like self aware cringe. It's very much like the main the protagonist's name is Lo Wang. Like it that game <laughs> that game knows exactly what it is. It it is supposed to be an irreverent, edgy self-aware cringe <clears throat> game that makes fun and pokes fun of everything so that's what makes it doubly odd to be like oh we have to be racially sensitive and cast the right race as the person who plays our character because we don't want to do me, 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 me. <laughs> he's like it's like fuck off bojack was voiced by a centaur <laughs> <laughs> well, Centaur's happy oh here, my so. goodness good news John DiMaggio is returning as Bender yeah I heard about that last Yay. night oh that's good it's I weird that that's I need to get some water <laughs> why um why, why was he originally not cast did they say I don't think we ever found out a reason now that he's back it just makes you wonder like oh alright then yeah cause his voice he you I mean could you have another Bender? I guess you could, but... He's got an eh. incredibly unique voice. Uh, yes. It's fucking impossible to impersonate Bender. You can only ever just repeat the quotes, and that's it. <laughs> but, uh... Yeah, I'm sure there's someone out there who could possibly come close, but the man is... Like, Jake from Adventure Time and Bender for, uh... Futurama. Like, I don't know anybody who can really impersonate them very well. Um, so I'm glad he's back, yeah. I will now give that a shot, probably. But, uh, still be worried about where it's gonna end up. I bet you haven't heard there's a Netflix Terminator anime coming down the sludge pipe. Why? Man. Why? <laughs> Let it well, die. Well, Matrix had an anime, and I heard it was alright. Animatrix was cool, yeah, but that was made when people wanted to make stuff. Nowadays, it's oh more yeah, so that was yeah. It was probably made because they had passion and talent and wanted to tell a story and present a tale in a different medium and blah art blah blah pat yeah. yeah. Isn't uh, the 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 Army of the Dead? They're getting an anime adaptation, <laughs> right? I'm sure everyone's gonna watch it. <laughs> Wait, I don't understand. This is such a false franchise. It's like nobody cares. Nobody's watching Lord you. Of the Ring anime. Oh, I mean the Army of the Dead one. 
Oh, no, no, no. I, oh, it's just someone to mention in chat, Lord of the Rings getting an anime too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm just saying that the Army of the Dead, when it gets its oh, sequel too, yeah. like, who the fuck's gonna it's, watch it's, it? It's franchised before it even had a film. Like, it was meant to be a franchise. You don't God, get to everyone loves that. this, huh? And it's like, no? It's no. not a choice you get to make, you know? Like... And like, because I'm on Real BBC Weekly, right? And, and there's a lot of people who are fans of Snyder there, but none of them ever talk about how good Army of the Dead is. Because <laughs> nobody likes it. Nobody wanted that movie, but there we are. Mm -hmm. uh, Gary said he tried to watch it and he gave up like 15 minutes in. It's tough. It's legit. <laughs> it, it is legitimately it is a difficult a movie to, to watch. watch. Yeah, like it actually it kind of hurts your eyes a bit. <laughs> and I really think it is indicative of his abilities because that is such an easy win to have mercenaries break into Vegas while fighting zombies. Like, Oops, oh, zombies. how do you fuck that up? Yeah. How do you fuck that up? And such I'm a cool sure little premise. Got, like full creative control over that one. Yep. Uh, hi guys, love all your content. I was wondering if you could do another Jared Genesis lore video. Um, lore I, video? I guess they just mean any of his videos, but uh, yeah, he was he was quite a character, and uh, I think... I think we've mostly just decided to leave him alone. I don't know what he's up to these days. I've heard things about how he's back on different uh, platforms. Or something? I don't know, but um... <laughs> I hope he's doing well, I guess. More Jared, yeah, I guess, please. Yeah. Army of the Dead applies to the audience. Oh my god, it was meta. It was all Oh meta. wow, Zach was actually clever. Like, after the credits nobody, finish, nobody he just points at the, the screen uh, and says, this was about you. This was you. You're the dead. Nobody talked about the prequel. Like, the, the prequel movie that they made. Army, was Army of Thieves, I think, was what it was called. I thought that was a TV show. Was um, it a movie? No, that was another film on Netflix, but nobody huh. talked about it. It, feel, it feels indicative of kind of what happened. It almost feels like the number of people who are fans of, like, Zack Snyder's general filmography is appreciably smaller than the number of people who are fans of specifically the DC films that he made. Yeah, the crossover has been minuscule, I think. Uh... It seems that way, and I guess we'll, it'll, it'll show more clearly with uh, the next film that he's making, I guess, how much interest there is in, in his ideas. Well, yeah, because people want him... To make more Batman stuff, I guess, and Superman. That's, uh, that's not happening. That no, is they're never letting happening. him near it again. Definitely not. The, yeah, like, they've already planted sequels for the Batman and spin-off shows. Like, that's that's a thing, and it's probably gonna make a bunch of money. Fringy, don't play Infinite. Play Deep Rock instead. I probably will give Deep Rock a chance, but now I've bought Elden Ring, so, uh, that's, that's gonna, I guess, be priority while I'm trying to work on uh the end game stuff fair enough you guys have oh, played deep rock galactic is the dark souls of cooperative dwarf mining adventure games i was just now, about what, to what say that, that mean? Yeah, just about to <laughs> what say does that. that mean i think it's oh. clear isn't it i feel like that's fringy fringy that's just my title i don't have to talk about it now <laughs> so anyway you guys ever play lord of the rings war in the north uh, pretty good graphics um, for the time. I, Great game. No, I remember it though. I remember it. I never played it. it. Yeah. It's a co-op game, right? It was like a co-op original thing set in the Lord of the Rings universe. I actually have no Where'd idea because I only ever knew the name, and I was like, I'll play that at some point, maybe, and then I didn't. Do you guys remember how there's a Gollum game coming out? What? Yes, I do. No, I, I don't do remember, remember that. that. Yeah, there's... a Gollum game. Yeah, a game where you yeah. play as Gollum Are crawling around riddles? like fucking Middle Earth, and you're trying to get to Mordor. I think I don't even know. I think that's what it's about, yeah. It's so bizarre, because I remember I was told about it by a friend, and I was just like, oh yeah, I forgot this was coming. Why is it coming? Why is- who wanted the Gollum game? Who wanted game? a Gollum game? But maybe it could be really cool. It could be amazing, like, it's, it's just why is this where we're at? I just don't understand how this Gollum, happened. yeah. Gollum, a Lord of the Rings story. <laughs> So uh, yeah, that'll be interesting as well. That pops out. I'll probably try it. I I'll just be so interested by the premise. I'm just like, you just play as Gollum crawling around doing things. Okay, I don't know. See what it's like. Well, it could be fun. Um, but yeah, great graphics for the time and great gameplay. Hi, Rags, Fringle Dangle, and the Massive. Hello. Hi. Hey. <clears throat> Speaking of shows ending, Arthur ended recently. Arthur. Yeah, it did. Arthur, the animated show. Remember? 
Oh, oh shit! Oh. Right. For a second there, yeah. I was thinking wow. King Arthur, and I was like, "What the fuck? Have I not heard of this?" <laughs> Long, the long-running King Arthur show on <laughs> PBS. Yeah. Did they no, not have? So. It, did they replace Arthur's voice actor with an actual Aardvark? Or <laughs> I don't know. We'll have to find out. Stephen Crowder was on that show, right? He was. Yeah. <laughs> Crowder was on Arthur. Yeah, he was a little he kid. Was, yeah. Voice. Yeah. Oh. Uh, I'll have to catch you in the rewatch studying to be like Aiden Paladin. Fair enough. Also, what's up with EFAP cooming over strong, well written female characters? Misogyny disproven? Anyway, have some money, my massive. I know, right? Oh. Just don't tell anybody mm. about that. Those three streams. Right. Don't know if this, this was sent during our catch up. Oh, this was, I, was, I think I was playing something on Dolphin. So, yeah. That, uh, if I only I remembered what it was. Let's assume it was Mario Kart. That sounds funny. Jeez, people are, people are saying they're beating the new Shadow Warrior in like five, six hours. Fuck me. Sure. Mm. That's bad. Um, how long are they usually? I've Shadow Warrior 1, about nine hours took me to beat it. But there's reasons to go back and replay. Shadow Warrior 2, I have 13 hours in, and I'm not finished. And I don't know how much further I have to go, and there's a lot of side quests and things that I haven't gone through, so it's easily two times longer content-wise. And it seems to... it's it's There's a lot of stuff in Shadow Warrior 2 mm. in terms of upgrades and different weapons. Seems to be like it's a huge... Shadow Warrior 3 seems to be like they tried to doomify it, and it's a huge downgrade... Damn. And it's really short, linear, and it's not—it's not open world anymore. All the zones. Mm. <laughs> that sucks. At least they fixed the voice actor. <laughs> Fine, no more goo. But how is the grit going? The what? The, the grit? grit. I have no idea what that's about. Yeah, I don't—I don't know that one. I don't know what's referencing. Um, maybe it's snowing, and then you put some grit down. I, I, I don't know. I did, like grits. Did you guys know that Cad Bane is 71 years old in Barba Fat? His species lives up to 70. But Edgy. Strange, isn't it, that the species lives up to 70 exactly? But, alright. Uh, the final episode really was two old men fighting. Only keys left in Star Wars. I just, I don't even know that it... <laughs> there was a tweet from Jay that said, um... You know, what happens to Mace Windu in Revenge of the Sith? As a kid, that's like definitely dead. But after seeing all of Disney Star Wars, you'd almost... I think you'd be forgiven for being like, he's not dead? What do you mean? He's, he's not dead. I'm yeah. not even referring to like resurrection. He didn't get Just, Yeah. <laughs> he fell out a window. <coughs> that's nothing. He fell I out did, a window. That's pussy shit. I think that from what we've seen in Disney Star Wars beyond Palpatine, right? Just like the, the other stuff. Well, I say beyond Palpatine. It's like not as far as Palpatine. I think you would feel they are translating to you that Mace would survive that. Like, they'd be like, of course he's alive. But without having seen Disney Star Wars, you'd be like, no, he's dead. But um, Yeah, I, I don't know how long it'll be before they'll bring him back. I don't know why they wouldn't. I, I'm pretty sure he said he'd happily come back, so I don't know why he wouldn't. Uh, have you seen The King's Man? No, I haven't. I want to, though. Nope. I don't. That's <laughs> okay. I've not seen The King's Man. I recently, I recently watched your storytelling EFAP. I think the most important part of storytelling is truthfulness. As in, does a story say something deep and truthful about the human experience? Um, I mean, I can understand that being something that you value in stories. I just don't think that that would be, like, the most fundamental element of the craft. I feel like yeah, you... Um, once you've got that... well-written characters, you are saying something about the human experience no matter what. I, I feel like you will have if you've created, yeah, strong characters. That's basically just saying theme, but more specifically, this kind of theme. Well, yeah, because theme is a hugely important part of storytelling as far as I'm concerned. Some form of a message, yeah. Yeah. Powerful. And oftentimes it is about the human experience in some way. Wow, it's hard not to write about the human experience as a human. Yeah, we're we're not going to talk about you know the plankton experience that often. I'm sure there's someone out there yeah. who did though. 
Well, SpongeBob talks about the plankton experience sometimes. Isn't mm. uh, isn't isn't the 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 guy in the opposing uh shop the plankton? What's his name? Um, is it plankton? Plankton I think from it might SpongeBob just be plankton, SquarePants. Yeah. Yeah, ah, see, that's how I remembered because that's his actual name. Yeah, he's he's plankton. He's just plankton. I don't know if the <laughs> other plankton are named, but it's like <laughs> it's that's like if 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 I don't know if someone's like a person if their name was human, you know? Yeah, yeah. or homo. <laughs> um, I'm sure you've been asked or if this they to were ex- twins, homo, homo. I'm sure you've been asked this to exhaustion, Mauler, but will you be playing slash streaming Elden Ring, High Rags? Hello. You know, well, I think I will. I've done five reckon- of them already, <laughs> so yes. Okay, huh. You can find them on the homepage of my channel. They are unlisted, but they're in a little playlist called Mauler Plays, I think, and it's all the little games I played over the years on, on the stream. Um... Uh, one from Real BBC. Will watch Gary read the original later and get confused. I'm glad Monster Hunter avoided the woke bit and is just terrible RE movie. Oh, the Paul W S Anderson Monster Hunter. Still on our list. Guys, still gotta we'll, see it. We'll get around to it. I'm sure. I'm hoping we'll get a second one by the time we look at it. Maybe. Or are they not getting a sequel for that? I don't know. Did it do well? I don't know. I don't know. I no, hope it did. Probably did. Yeah. Um, at Rags, you don't want to marry a period. Too much trouble. And every day it's just one thing after another. I think that was when you had to choose between fuck, marry, kill, a, a question mark, exclamation mark, and a full stop, I think. So anyway, two is also Filmento's thing weird misunderstandings. He understands the Monster Hunter movie's bad, but doesn't get Monster Hunter at all and acts like it should be a horror. Monster horror. Hunter is not a horror game. It's an I heard it's adventure. the furthest thing from yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. There are, well, um, so, I don't know how much you guys know about the game, but the Kezu Nothing. is like this creature that's fucking horrifying, um, and it's intro cutscene in the game. Someone in chat will know what I'm talking about. It like sits on ceilings, and its neck extends down uh, to like just slowly swallow creatures that go into its cave sort of thing. Um, and that's definitely framed as like a horror sort of cutscene, but we're talking literally like less than 0.1% of the game is horror. The rest of it is absolutely like adventurous. Mm-hmm. So, um... Is that another one of like his weird writing rules? Well, it sounds like he just thought from what he saw in Monster Hunter that it should have been a horror movie, which I find Why him so strange. Like, that would be more. bizarre based off of what I know about the tone yeah, of that I, game I if Monster they made Hunter a... And- but like, I why even? Plus, I don't want him to make a horror movie. I want him to make a stupid action movie where his wife. Yeah, absolutely. Spins around and we see her tits. That's what. That's what he needs to be making until the day he dies. Is just those movies. I would not change him. Three Musketeers, <laughs> man. It's one of his best movies. <laughs> it was legitimately very entertaining movie. I I highly recommend Three Musketeers. It was so fun. Um, yeah, I, I, uh, like, I just don't know why that would be the nature of the conversation. Like, instead of trying to repair the movie as it is, it's like, let's switch genre. It's like, whoa, wh- wh- why? What? That'll fix it. In yeah. what way do you think that this is a solution? <laughs> Especially this director. You know what's funny? Uh, I, I actually thought in my head, for some reason, that... Yeah, like, why would he do horror? They're like, oh, well, his best movie is horror, and all of the Resident Evil films were horror, technically. I just don't think of them as horror. Technically. (laughs) It's technically with 7,000 quotations floating around. Because there are segments of those films where he tries to do scary parts, and they're hilarious because of how transparent it is what he's trying to do, you know? And how it just doesn't work. So, it it just... Ugh. I would now if he made a le- tried to make a legit horror film, I would be curious to see it because it would be terrible. Would be- but all of his yeah. films are terrible. But I-, I wonder if it'd be entertaining, you know. Someone in chat just said the movie is framed as a horror movie. Is it? Well, the super chat horror. says that Filmento wanted it to be a horror movie, so I have no fucking clue what's going on anymore. 
both of those can be true. I guess so, yeah. Uh, yeah, alright, anyway. <laughs> Three. I also remember the way I cheesed this game was the two-hit combo that knocked people down. I think it broke shields and then stab while they're down. Assume they're talking maybe about... Was I playing... Lord of the Rings? Oh, I was playing Two Towers, uh, Return of the King, yeah. So that, that's what they were talking about when they said this is Elden Ring. <laughs> it's like, yep. Uh, hi, Mags and Friggy. Hello. <gasps> hi, If Vi shot Caitlyn, what do you think Jinx would have done? Um, so she's like broken enough in her head that she would see that that's absolute proof that yeah. Vi loves Jinx. Um, and so then she'd probably release her. And then she would ask her to, to like, what should, we should, what should we do with Silco? Silco would be untied of his mouth, and then he'd be like, this is bullshit! And I guess we'd get a similar set of things happening, I'm not sure, but... Um, yeah, Jinx had lost her mind enough that she thought, all you have to do is kill Caitlyn, and that's proof that you don't want her over me. And it's like, what the fuck? Yeah, <laughs> obviously it's not quite rational. <laughs> no. But... Uh, also, please play Cuphead on Super Chats. I want to see you guys lose it. I don't think I can oh. play that on Super Chats. <laughs> I don't think that's a game for Super Chats. I will no, have to focus no, it's not. to be able to play it. Like, I can't just casually play Cuphead. Uh, just saw Enemy at the Gates. What a great film. Highly recommend, though it has its contrivances. Also, do a Chernobyl EFAP Mini. Only five hours. Smile. I think there are, as as much as I love Chernobyl as a show, I think we have other things that we try to want, want to try and kind of get done first. I don't think that works. I don't for know EFAP that it's mini. conducive to EFAP movies. I don't yeah, think it will be. I think it'll just be us watching it. Story. Yeah, yeah. It's more a thing that would get like a video, but I don't even know yeah. what I would. There's probably really good video essays on that out there, especially probably. about the realism and stuff. And yeah, enemy of the greats, uh, enemy at the gates, good schnizzles, and um. I like that you just said smile at the end. How nice, how friendly. Smile. By the way, did you guys ever check out that Terminator FPS game that came out a while ago? It's the only good Terminator thing out so far. I, I, everyone's told me to I've check it out. I've heard it's pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. I've heard it's pretty good. I have no intention to do it anytime soon, I guess, but like, I, I do want to check it out at some point just because of what everyone said. The Book of Boba Fett is like a cold, wet towel wrapped around the midriff of my mind. Midriff of my mind. Uh, it drenches us with its sour tones, soaking us until one can do naught but become united with one's uncomfort. No. No, Boba Fett is like when you're sitting down in a chair for a long time, and then at some point you just sort of notice that your back is just a little little bit sweaty but it doesn't really bug you you just sort of you just, you just sort of notice it randomly after a, a number of hours that's what book of boba fett is i just think it was shit <laughs> <laughs> so anyway uh rewatch the hobbit trilogy not as good as lord of the rings but it isn't jj abrams trash either love how they adapted the songs from the books or well, the book rather yeah um I remember not being at all offended by those movies. I like the first one, second one was eh, third one was bad. That's what I remember. Yeah. The first one is what I remember the most, and I remember liking it the most of the three. Fringy, you it must doesn't feel like some soulless cash grab. Like, they clearly tried to do things and put a lot of work and effort into it. It just didn't quite resonate. Yeah. Which I appreciate. Uh, Fringy, you must come to realize that Australia is a false nation, as Teal Teal C realized that the gold are false lords. Also, Penguin play Half Life. I could play Half Life. Sometime, but I, yeah. <laughs> not sure what I'm meant to do with that. False nation. My goodness. What can you do? Um. Drove past Llewellyn Road, the Welsh are invading. Yeah, then you don't worry about it. Welsh do that every once in a while. Why would you do that? You know, just having a look, having a look around. Um, Duma was abandoned by EFAP chat and is currently under his Jinx arc. The Sitchin Adam chat accept him with open arms, but what's his new name? Hmm. 
Could just be Jinx, I guess. Or Doominx. That sounds like it'd be a bit weird. Doominx. <laughs> Maybe he just calls himself Doom. He's just Doom now. Uh, also, you guys missed a giant criticism that destroys Arcane. Two words. Coed prison. Hashtag midcane. Um, I mean, it's a fantasy world. So, like. That's a fantasy if, world, yeah. Uh, I'm assuming that it's. And they, they don't seem to care about the fate of a lot of people who end up there. They keep repeating that. Maybe it's a. That's a deterrent to keep women from committing crimes, knowing that the prisons are co ed. Um, it's, obviously. She gets put in solitary the second she attacks that guy, so there probably is some level of rule of don't fucking do anything with anybody else sort of stuff, but uh, I, don't, I don't know how well they enforce it, and yeah, seems like it's... If you remember, when, when, when Jinx says, I've, I've done a lot of stuff, uh, Vi says, we've both done all kinds of things to survive. It's just like, hmm. Solitary um, confinement is or isn't co-ed. I mean, it, it would be not, know. right? Because there's only it one person. It would be no ed, because there's only one person, yeah. Uh, Silco, I understand. Well, is, is, well, let me, well, well, is, is a, let's say, let's say a, a public high school, right? If the building is empty, is it co-ed? I guess it's nothing, right? Until, if, if there's no students enrolled, it's, it's just nothing. It's just a building. I don't know. I was, I can move, you can move the, along. The I, don't, I don't even know where I'm yeah, going. With of... this. All right then, Stilko. I understand now, brother. How cringe it was for me to want to kill you. Pours out drink at a statue, and dabs. Oh, and high rags. Hi. <laughs> yeah. By the way, that is, that is what Silco was missing. The the one thing that would have really really lifted him up to that legendary status dab when when uh savika kills the guy at his yeah, desk that was like the he most just needed to he needed to dab for Hulk was the dab mm. dab that was how we knew that he was a changed man truly how many character how many paragraphs do you have devoted to the hulk dab in your <laughs> i i don't have a paragraph but i have a joke that i Pages? like oh okay no, I don't know. I don't have paragraphs for that. I just need, um, I got, I got a little joke that I like. You need to hire someone to just make this incredibly high resolution, like perfect quality, five second clip of you just screaming your head off and melting into a puddle after yeah. seeing it. Uh, yeah, like it's just Raiders of the Lost Ark. <laughs> 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 the beak, the beak is melting too. <laughs> God, you always want that one guy in the studio or whatever to come in and be like, I just saw this fucking dab. Joe, Anthony, what the fuck is this? And they're like, what well, is cool? Kids like it. It's like, no. You like the Fortnite joke? No, I did not like I did the not Fortnite say joke. that. <laughs> one of my assistants may have said that, but I didn't fucking say that. Uh, hi, Massives. Hey. Hi. Hey. Thoughts, thoughts on the Wolf Among Us 2? Uh, I'm super excited for that. I really like the first game. Um, I don't uh, know anything about it. So yeah, I got no uh, connection. It's one of Telltale's games. One of their early... Well, not early, because thought... they've been around for a long time. It was after The Walking Dead. I think that was the next thing they did. I thought they, like, exploded. Are they... Uh, they did, but then they kind of got reformed, and I think there's another studio that had some of the Telltale employees, uh, like, form up to do something. But uh, they're, they're, they're around again. From the ashes, the frog mouth mm -hmm. rises. Neat. Uh, also, since you liked The Hunt with Mads Mikkelsen, I would strongly recommend Another Round. Yes, yeah, same same creators and same actors, I think. Huh. I saw YMS review it. Um, he didn't seem that... He thought he was good, he just didn't seem that interested. And, and I was like, oh, I might watch that at some point, but I'm not in too much of a rush. Um, also, hi Rags, hi Fringman. Oh, Fringman hey, hello. Soy. They called you Fringman Soy. They're allowed to say that. Alright, and happy birthday, Moodle. Yeah, happy birthday, I guess. <laughs> uh, Iron... Iron Pineapple put out a review of Elden Ring after 60 hours of playtime, rated it 10 out of 10. I have high hopes. 10, 10 out, out of 10. 10. 
Mm. Ooh, mm. Well, I mean, a lot of I people gave it a 10 it, but... out of 10 Ooh. if it's got a 97 on, Meta on a Metacritic. This is one of those things, like, people, people are asking me, is like, do you think it's overrated? It's like, I mean, it has to be. It's pretty much got no choice. It can't be, well, a, like... If if the reviews, if we were to take aggregate review scores, then Elden Ring is... When we say one of the best games ever made, we're talking, like, of, like, the five contenders for best game ever made, it would be one of them. That would be what you would pull from scores like that if, if we go by review scores. Yeah, like... It... Um, I understand how this has happened, but it ain't a 10 out of 10. Well, 10 out of 10. I don't know that there's anything that's a 10 out of 10. And in the world of games, it's like... In the, yeah, in games it'd be like... So many variables. Chess, Tetris, like simple game. Not say chess is super simple, but like... Well, connect that, that, four. that have like no flaws. Like, what are the flaws of chess? You know, like... <laughs> What could you point out as something that's wrong with chess that needs fixing? It might come yeah, down like to like the particular pong. version or something. You know, like yeah, as maybe. in the UI, or if it's a digital one or whatever, yeah. Um, Your base, though, you know. But yeah, I mean, you know, the, the, the stuttering and lagging and freezing alone, like that, there's no way it can be rated 10 out of 10 from all the complaints. Fucking Cat Icarus put out a tweet saying, do not buy it on Steam, it's fucked. And it's just like, damn, dude. Yeah, some like, people are having serious problems with it, but um, why? It feels like it, it doesn't feels work like for some people. Those are ignored, though. This doesn't work. Yeah, well, like, uh, so you yeah. got everything from it won't like fucking launch for some people. Very few, I will admit, but there's there's that there's there's co like constant stuttering for some people where it just won't even run past like twenty FPS or something like that. That's bad. Then there's some people who get like spikes, but pretty consistent spikes, and then there are some people like me who. It plays fine pretty much all the time, except here and there when it's loading areas, or I'll get a spike every once in a while. And I think like one time it got me killed, maybe two. Um, and then I think oh, you get shit. someone like Metal, who I think he said it's been running pretty much perfectly. Like it's just he's not really had any problems. And then there are people, yeah, who are reporting that like they have no idea what people are talking about. But it's perfectly fine. This um. It seemed like there's no way the coverage would be this positive if this were more common, but it it's still common enough that I've heard a lot about it. So, hmm. <clears throat> it's not like um Arkham was it Arkham Knight? Was Arkham game... Knight didn't work for anybody basically. There was like a for more people than not, it was broken. Yeah, it was unfortunate because uh, Smiler got it when it came out and he played it to completion almost in like a couple of days and he loved it. He thought it was great. He had loads of fun. Everyone was like complaining. He was like, "I worked fine for me." <laughs> like, I can't understand. God, Arkham Knight. That was like a catastrophe in a lot of ways. I remember that that was the pre-order bonuses and and all that were insane for that game too. Yes. Yeah, like, God. what do you? How do you even review the? What are you supposed well, to say? Like, because it's just like, well, yeah, if exactly. it works perfectly for you, are you supposed to just be like, well, I've heard that it doesn't work perfectly for everybody, so that has to. Does that affect your score? Yeah, it would have to, right? Surely it would have to, yeah. It's um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, but hopefully they've been adding updates. I'm hoping that they've fixed in fixing these issues. I don't know. Um, that's how Cyberpunk worked for me. I heard and saw so many problems. I got a tiny fraction of them, such that I got through the entire game just fine, and I loved it. Man. Complicated on PC. You know, there was so like, much um, shit to see in that game go wrong. Like... Yeah. I don't know they if... They recently uh, released their uh, big old patch, right? Their big update um, of, hey, sorry, we fixed it now. <laughs> <laughs> I mean... It's better now than never. Yeah, well, well, that's over a year since it came out, right? It came out at the end of 2020, so it's been a... Yeah, man. I'll... Oh, man, I just have no interest in playing that game. <laughs> I'll I'll give it another try when their first big DLC comes out, and I, then well, I could see all the patches and everything, but... <sighs> we'll see. I'm not, like, chomping at the bit to play it. I'm just like, ah, oh, whenever that comes, I'll be like, okay, I might try it now. Yeah. But it won't be until probably first big DLC time. I think the only way I'd be playing it is if like all of you guys played it and said it's amazing and you have to play it. I'd be like, all right, fine. But I don't know if I'm ever going back to that one. Did you guys see the Woke of the Rings teaser trailer? It's going to be the Game of Thrones season eight, but worse. Um, might. 
I'll have to see. Might be. We'll be checking it out. Uh, I'm yeah, I'll be watching it for sure. The Last Duel is slow paced but beautiful, and the writing does make sense. Worth watching for the twenty minute long fight scene that's historically accurate. Interesting. Oh boy. I have so many films I want to watch though, and, and games and TV shows. It's not fair. It's hard to. Yeah, it is. It's not. I wish there was so more cruel. time. Such such incredible issues we must deal with. Yeah. I uh, wanted to plug Nerd Anonymous and St. Millions channels. The former has three detailed video essays on why the Star Wars films... Oh, sorry, on just the Star Wars films. And the latter has short, funny lore videos. There you go. Nerd Anonymous and St. Million. Is Kung Fu Panda Trilogy EFAP approved? This person has asked this a couple of times. I believe so. Uh, I haven't seen it in as long enough, though. As far as I can remember, yeah. Yeah, as far as I remember. Uh, why call them Snyderoids when Snydrones rolls off the tongue much year? <laughs> Snydrones, that's pretty good. Snydrones I think they, is pretty good. I think they wanted to say much easier, I but it's have... autocorrected to earlier, so it just says <laughs> Snydrones rolls off the tongue much earlier. <laughs> it's like, wait. I th they seem too passionate to be, like, drones. Drones, uh, drones kind of implies this, like, autonomous, neutral sort of kind of thing, you know, that like an automaton, but they're too just passionate and despicable. Yeah, there's something about the oids, I think, that people associate very much with a group of, of robots walking in, like, lockstep, while drones, I think, makes you think of, like, uh, things that are sent, or, I don't know. There's, there's probably a reason why people opted for oids instead of drones, but I I, I do think it works though. Sny drones, that's a good it one. Sounds, yeah, it sounds pretty good. Yeah. Uh, damn it, I meant easier. Yeah, I, I figured. It's just, it was funny though. <laughs> <laughs> what a classic game. My brothers and I played the, the dawn out of this. Oh, then I bought Third Age thinking it would be like this game. I was very, very wrong. Yeah, Third Age is nothing like Two Towers and Return of the King. Uh, no, yeah, it's a completely different game. All of them are very well balanced. Today I heard someone describe Arcane as a generic fantasy adventure series. Mind you, this same person considers Lower Decks clever and well written. Oh. <laughs> hmm. Hey man, you know, there's, there's something out there for everyone. Great. Would you rather be known for being subtle or being supple? Hmm. There's something to be said about if everyone knows you're subtle, how subtle are you? Right. It's almost like the 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 high the peak of subtleness is no one even knows you're subtle. And yeah, like um, if you're known for being subtle, then it's like, wait a minute. Like <laughs> you know? everyone like every like you could still be subtle, but it's almost like it's that extra like whenever you're playing a game, if you're very subtle all the time. That's like A rank, everyone knows it, but if you want to get to S tier rank for subtleness, no one can even know that you're subtle. Like, it's just a different sort of, you know, it's, it's master level subtle. Um, or, or supple? Well, supple has a lot, let's see, just to make sure. I think it means like bending without breaking. Yeah, bending or moving easily and gracefully. Flexible. Um, so there are some things that you want to have, be, you know, that you have that are that you, that should be supple. Um, but some things about you maybe shouldn't be supple. They should be more rigid and more. Uh, I get dug in and entrenched like I don't want someone's principles to be bending and moving easily and gracefully and gracefully or flexible, yeah. you know, but like their body, you want a supple body. But you know, it, it depends on what supple thing. Uh, so well, yeah, like you should always be willing to have your mind changed. Um, but to to some extent, you should have certain things that you're pretty set on. Yeah, so like it's okay to have like a supple mood, right? Your mood could change sure. and shift as things you know as things happen, and it's a you know you give appropriate emotional responses to things around you. Um, 
but I, I think I'm going to go with supple, but it's, it's kind of like a wild card where some things are good to be supple. Some things not so much. I don't Subtle's know, all right. There's something about being very, there, there, I think there's a quality in being, you know, upfront about your, your personality where people appreciate how direct you can be and um, how you, you do say what's on your mind and you don't want to beat around the bush. Well, all right then. So I, I guess it's a tough one because there's just, you know, there's negatives and positives to both, right? Yeah. If you interpret them very positively, maybe subtle could simply mean people think of you as someone who can get their points across very uh, wittily, carefully, without being too overt about it or something. Yeah. And then maybe you got big tits. Yeah, or, and, and supple could just mean you know you you're uh, you're you're good at trying to compromise the situation or trying to. Make things sort of satisfy many people at once. So do, 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 I, I, I don't know. There's, there's so many ways. But if you're going to choose one, I don't know, I guess. Uh, if we were to simplify it, known as like, do you want to be known as flexible or. <laughs> it is funny as you put it out to be known as subtle. Like, wait. <laughs> yeah. To be known as inconspicuous, you know, it's like, hmm. To be seen it's as like, It's like the famous assassins, you're like, mm, yeah, okay. There's a line from Game of Thrones before it was shit, where he says, uh, if you're a famous smuggler, you're not doing it right. It's good mm -hmm. shit. I'll go with subtle, I guess, because even if people know, that doesn't mean... That they'll they'll catch everything you're putting down or something. I don't know. Woohoo, we did it. Uh, FNT is too noisy for me. Hard to follow. Only plays. I feel like Only plays and Friday Night Tights are very different in their um in their approach to a show. You know. Yeah. But, um. Hey, you know, if you prefer one over the other, that's totally fine. Today's animal of the day is the meerkat. Oh, I think we all know that one. Every time yeah. it cuts. Also, wait, wait I'm, let's go to Singapore. Compertemarket.com We discover that Singapore was, you oh. know, weeks ago for better Discord audiotisms. We discovered yeah. it because I think we just, I, I, don't even, I think all of them would work, theoretically. We just, I tried Singapore because I figured it was one that most people won't be using like, compared to the others. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, there's no real reason to assume that Singapore works any better than any of the other choices, really. It's just a, a, it's an assumption. Um, well, I subscribe to the School of Action by J.J. Abrams. Lol, J.K., I think finding an arc theme and sun themes first, then focusing on logic writing second. An arch theme and a sun theme. A sun theme? Does it mean sub theme? Maybe. It could be. I, I'm not actually sure. I'm, uh... It might be a misspelling, yeah. Maybe they mean an overarching theme, and then a more specific theme, and then focusing on logic. Maybe that's what they're yelling for. Um, happy one year of objectisms and give you giving you money. Needed a break up from the other guys' chats. Duma's wrench had its chance. Sitch L no and high rags. Sitch L no. Hello. Yeah, thank you and hello. Never forget that on nine eleven a lot of funny jokes were invented. Also high rags. Hello. Yeah, and uh, Norm Macdonald told a lot of them. Fucking top notch. If you sp yeah, you spetch a spot, will that flangle the dangle or simply flumpus the moompus? You know, I'm really not sure. It's one of those things. Both of those seem like they could be possibilities, though. I think you just you find out by trying, right? That's one of those things. I think so. I think that's a good attitude. Mm -hmm. Hey, nerds, just seen the new Scream film, and the killer is basically the toxic brood. Gonna go through it on Tuesday on Proper Horror Shows channel. Oh, oh nice. That's what I've been told. Glad but we're apparently... making waves out there in the serial killer community. Yeah, it's, 
it's apparently a ki the killer is annoyed that they've taken the franchise in a direction they don't like. Hee <laughs> hee. And uh, the new one was made by Ryan Johnson, I think, in the in the universe of the film. Like, oh, ho, ho. Mm, but what are they saying? Oh, but what are they saying? I just don't know. I can't figure it out. I'm sure it's very subtle, and they're known for being subtle. Uh, His themes are supple. Oh my. The Boba Fett show, presumably, is a cold, wet towel wrapped around... Oh, this is this one again. It's all the same one. Oh. oh we, we read that one already, but it also says high rags. Hello! Uh, one of my biggest pet peeves in stories is when the main characters are rewarded for a stupid plan, or when all of the villain's legitimate points are completely disregarded because they're bad. I am. Yeah, I, I don't like those either of those annoying. things. Yeah. I was thinking about um, if we did the inverse writing one where we talk about the negative sides of all the things, so like, you know, most hated character, most hated story, and then most like hated things that can happen in a story maybe. It would be cool if we all picked like one of those kinds of things and then had an example. So, like, I would be totally down for that. That sounds fun. Yeah, like I hate it when villains' legitimate points are completely disregarded. It's like, yeah, there's, there's probably some good ones you can grab for that. Or rewarding a stupid plan. Yeah. Um, people are so focused on the bikers from episode 3 because they're cringe, and the average human brain detects cringe much faster than it can detect bad writing. It's yeah. true, it's an yeah. evolutionary it's adaptation. Yeah, we avoid the cringe. Instinctual thing. I watched cringe videos about that. Like, yeah, it's, it's a thing. Yeah, like, we have that reaction because it's designed to keep us away from socially, like, th things that would make us less uh, socially accepted or whatever, right? Like, yeah, because it's it's like um the the reason why humans really value like social acceptance and deeply fear social rejection is because there was a time when the people who didn't fear it got cast out and died because it yeah. was back in the time when you needed to cooperate with people, and so now it's just this thing we've inherited that often causes problems for people. It seems. Yeah, thanks. The evolution. True age of the Sigma male grind set. Yeah. But uh, but it used to be that if you were a Sigma male, you just got cast out and died. <laughs> so you know, only Sigma the true male Sigma rises, males uh, could survive out in the out, out in the wild. wild I thought yeah. you'd say only the true Sigma males fucking die. <laughs> it's like, oh, well, all right. Boom, um, boom, boom. Sigma rule: get eaten by a saber toothed tiger because you have no friends. <laughs> Don't know which way is up is an idiom for confusion. The confusion is neither visually or in dialogue explained. It's dumb, but it's not literal. Wait, are they talking about in The Rise of Skywalkers? I don't know if they are. Because it's they, about them leaving the planet. Yeah, they, they mean. So yeah, 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 they mean literally. literally. So yeah. some people, I I remember I got like responses on that. It's like it's not that they don't know which way is up. It's that they can't access like the the tower that will direct them into uh, you know orbit or whatever. The direction it's just like, up. Okay, yeah. Dude, just so think up. it through. <laughs> like yeah. they don't know which way is up. Where is the sky? How do you get into orbit? You go up. They just gotta go up, for fuck's sake. <laughs> it's so stupid. So, yeah, like, uh, uh, a lot of people were like, that. that's not the problem with that scene. It's like, it totally is. Yeah, it is. They didn't realize they were making that when they the were Empire. making it. Yeah, they fucking... They, they, the they thought order. they were really clever when they said, we have to navigate via a control tower, and it's being that disabled. That isn't a part of our ship, yeah. And then you're like, navigate where? It's like, up. <laughs> up. Nice. Yeah, I think even uh, Rich Evans says, like, did they just look down and then go opposite of that? Like, <laughs> this is all we gotta do. It's like, yeah. Um, full control. Would you rather make a movie, game, TV show? Oh, that's the first question. So, out of those three. Uh, I'd want to make a game. Game. If I had um, full control, yeah. So, yep. the fact that they said full control rather than, like... You know it'll turn out. If I if I had a guarantee that this thing would turn out perfectly, I'd go with game. Um, yeah. Full control, meaning I get to make all the decisions. I'm probably gonna go with a TV show because I feel like I'm gonna have very little understanding of how the making a game. Yeah. I'm already little I understanding think, on all three, right, for the production of I all of them. I would uh, assume that I. It's the idea that whatever concept I have in my head could be executed to the fullest potential, and mm. if so, then I would go with video game. 
Um, but I like the idea of with TV show, I just get to write lots of long term character stuff. It'd be fun. You could have, you can have that, in that game. in my ideal video game. Um, yeah. you, this is the problem again, though. Of, like, I don't know that I would. I need to make good gameplay too, and I, I might want to just sequester myself to one aspect. That. I suppose I mean, that's I what full control implies. I could just really pick whatever like, I want. Oh yeah, like you're not gonna make the whole thing yourself. Yeah. Yeah. And of course, and you get to test it, make control, sure, and like, double check everything. Yeah, like even full control. That doesn't mean I don't have conversations with people to figure out how to execute on the idea. Collaboration is key to making them video games, unless you're making it on your own, I guess. <laughs> but uh, because I make... can just I can. What's it? More looking to make a walking sim. Yeah, it would be the most character-filled walking sim ever. I would want to make like a big old like RPG with lots of diverging paths and and choices and and stealth and stuff. That's what I'd want. Yeah. Um. Also, Jay, you're gonna make a Harry Potter critique. My brother and I are waiting. Um. I don't know if Jay plans to do that or not, but uh, maybe, maybe one day. Interesting. Mm. I'd be interested. If he made one, I would watch the shit out of it. Wow. Well, I would be very about curious about Harry Potter critique. About one of those films. Oh, boy. Would that be, I, I um, would that be all a potential EFAP movies one day? I think it would maybe. be. Maybe. Nice. I, th I think Harry Potter will lend itself quite easily for the format. Yeah, I think so too. There'll be stuff that'll happen that'll make us all go. Seems Why don't like, they just um, use time travel? <laughs> seems like there's not as much interest in those Fantastic Beast films. Yeah. No, I don't hear really anything about them. There's a new one coming out like a couple of months, I think. But uh, I don't know. It seems like uh, people don't really care about it, and I guess there's also the whole Johnny Depp stuff stemming from it too. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So, so this, I'm just gonna have to read this, alright? Here we go. Would you all suck right, gas... Would you suck gas out of your folks with a straw if it meant world peace? Try not to be selfish. Suck gas out of your folks? That's what it says. Like my family? Suck gas so. out of my... If I could just stick a straw in their mouth and suck in and I'll suck gas out of them. Yeah, I don't, I don't know, know what I, I mean. mean. It could mean a lot I'm, of things. Because yeah. I'm always, I have to suck gas to live, so I assume I could just do that to someone else. That you just reverse CPR. It could mean much worse. It could mean the gases that are on the other side of the body, and uh, it could. But and it says that you get world peace for it. The problem with world peace makes me wonder where's everyone at if there is absolute world peace. You know, what's going on? Have I usurped everyone's free will yeah, or ability it's the same to make thing decisions? Like, make everybody really happy on it. It's like, whoa, what does that mean? Mm. Are we in the Matrix shit? Is that what's happening? Is everyone plugged into stuff? What's going on? Yeah. Should I be happy when some things happen? Yeah, so will be, you know, I'm just... It says try not to be selfish. It's like, hmm, this sounds like a trick. It sounds like the devil trying to make yeah. me suck thoughts. Yeah, it's it's like the heaven thing, where it's like, oh, you'll you'll just be happy and blissful forever in heaven. And it's like, but but what if I'm aware that someone I love went to hell? Am I just, am, am I going to be happy about that? Mm. Yeah, that doesn't sound you like aren't the same that, person. So yeah, well, doesn't welcome sound to, like some. That, welcome hmm. to the place where your brain chemistry is altered against your will forever. I love the <laughs> it idea. Sounds like I have to be brainwashed to. Hmm. I, lo I love the idea you're in heaven. It's like, oh, mom, dad, grandpa, grab. Where's uh, where's, well, gra where's grandma? Was, and then they're like, "There's a dark you know, matter cartoon." Oh, so. grandma um, masturbated once, so she's burning <laughs> in hell for eternity. It, like, it was oh. a dark matter cartoon where like the guy goes to heaven and then God shows him that his mom is in hell, and then he's like, "You're not allowed to be sad in hell, so let's turn the uh, in heaven, so let's turn that frown upside down." So he's there smiling with tears rolling down his eyes oh. as he's watching the footage. <laughs> Just don't think of. I remember that there was a, a one of the ones I really liked was the 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 through the the I, the story was um oh you're coming into uh a man and his wife they're coming into heaven uh the wife didn't believe so she's going to hell uh the person who murdered her when she was on earth uh he believed so he's going to heaven so the two of them go to heaven smiling and sitting on a swing 
going up and down, really creaky, smiling at each other, two people who have no reason to like each other at all. It's like, yeah, mm, I don't know about that one, you know? Oh, there's a lot of things I don't know about. In Just that don't think about it. Um, Charlie fighting his grandma and Helen smiling friends. Um, yeah, th and that super chat ended with Oni plays Wario Land Four. Apparently, that's a good one. I'm sure that is a good one. <laughs> hey, can y'all the Second Cavalry Regiment? We might go to World War Three, and the infantry could use your support. I, 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 I hope I hope not. I hope we're going to World War Three. I don't know. Yeah, I don't want to. I, I don't want World War Three. My favorite part and if of it's the world versus Russia it won't last very long. Uh, my favorite part of storytelling is a sense of completeness, like a story having all the information you need presented to you. My favorite example of this being the Prestige, complex but complete. Um. Fine. Finality and closure is an interesting thing to think about when it comes to story. Um, yeah, because I hate to, like, almost bolster a really funny quote from H. Bomber Guy because it's the like, you can get a sense of closure in not having an, an, a, a strict ending. Yeah. So that's right. it's like it gets complicated what exactly it means because someone else might be like, that was shit. I didn't even know what happened. And the other person's like, wow, that was so satisfying because of what it means or something like that. Yeah. Exactly. Um, and also, I mean, how do we how do we think about this with like a sequel? Uh, not a sequel, a story that has a sequel and like mm. the ending expects you to follow. Like, do we consider the story's complete list to be its totality or its parts? And if we're going to look at parts, can't we break it down into chapters or like the first 30 minutes of the film? You know, like how do we or a TV show um, that's serialized? Is it, it is it its totality? What if it gets canceled? before it can finish it's uh, and also just you know what does it mean to feel like there's a sense of completeness it was like it varies from person to person it's tough it's complicated it makes me think you just made me think like imagine they announced like prestige 2 coming soon by disney yeah. or something. and then like, you said oh, it was Jesus almost my Christ. intent to make a sequel i always wanted to the prestige was open-ended on purpose or something <laughs> that's one of those sequel. there's a couple of them but that's one of those movies where it's just like never ever make a sequel holy shit it's done it's so done the story is over yes. please um maybe writers used to tell good stories when their mums were there to make them nuggies yeah and they're just not there to make them anymore you know or maybe that's what it was. It was the lack of mothers providing nuggies, and they had to go out there and get their nuggies on their own. And that gave them mm. a lot of pizzazz to, to write stories. Um, hi, you're wrong. Happy birthday. Kick. You know. Okay. As you do. Uh, the story of the universe is devoid of characters for most of it. Not necessarily. It is. Not necessarily. It depends. Yeah. We, we have no idea. You can, but uh, maybe. There's, there's, there's lots that could have been there. And to be fair, if we just get a narrator in there. Some kind. Maybe we can make some characters out of the planets and what they get up to over the sure millions we could, of years. If we wanted to. And I mean, I guess there's the, uh, the interesting thought of you think about Earth, there's a whole bunch of ecosystems working. Not necessarily together, but definitely influencing each other. And you as a human being is an ecosystem of smaller components working together. Yeah, isn't there like a whole ass fucking menagerie of bacteria that makes like a whole biome in your gut? In your gut, yes. It's like incredibly important to your existence. And these are living things. Yeah, um, see, I have friends. <laughs> and of course, your cells and everything, and white blood cells, red blood cells, all sorts of things that just run all on their own without input from you, but are part of you and can, and create you, the conscious you. Well, yeah, when we um, it's real complicated when we're trying to figure out, thinking about that on like a universal scale. When we start to understand like all the systems that are in us and stuff and how they work, it's just like whoa. It starts to uh. <laughs> erode certain perceptions that we have about ourselves though as well but while also it feels like it's very difficult to get answers on like consciousness you know yeah. like we, we can we can figure out how the brain works to some extent and we can do things that predictably will result in these changes in the way that a person may behave 
and we can predict how people will behave generally, but we still have no idea what the what the experience itself is or what it represents, um, or if if we're the only ones that have it. Yeah, it's and it's it's uh, yeah, the universe is an interesting place. That's for sure. Uh, if a tree falls in a forest and no one's around to hear it, does it make a sound? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it does. Yeah, you don't. We can yeah, record it. Sound waves are not. Well, yeah, I don't, I don't remember don't us require an observer. Well, I, don't yeah, I, don't, I don't remember us defining sound the... by who's around to hear it rather than mm -hmm. what it's, what's being made. Yeah. Uh, guys, you were wrong. Holland isn't Spider Man. He's Strange Jr. because Strange helped him. <laughs> there you That's go. true. <laughs> Yeah, how come they don't say, hmm? Um, hmm. well, I mean, I guess, uh, it depends if we see Doctor Strange again in the next movie, then maybe that will be, he'll be, he'll be Strange Jr. Um, I said JK, but when do you think bad plot supersedes character? I, uh, they can have crossover, but ultimately if they are really categorized differently, the most damage plot does is when it becomes the, the time travel -y stuff or dimensional or multiversal stuff. That's usually like breaks apart what is supposed to be... Well, I guess that's world building too. Um, yeah, I think so. Oh, supersedes character. What does it mean for that to happen? That the plot is so bad that the good character writing is worthless. I don't know what that would mean unless the character writing is severely compromised by the bad plot. By the bad plot. Yeah, you know. what comes first if yeah, if a character is acting in a way that you would that would be implied differently based on the scenario that they're in, is that a problem with the character or the plot? Generally we say it's the character because it's the character's actions. So, and plus, plots don't have agency in the way that a character does. So can a thing be a plot's fault in the same sense that something is a character's fault? It's it's hard to say which one can supersede the other. I, I assume that characters can. Uh, I When can a plot... Because I'm trying to think of an issue where... Because generally, even if a plot is borked, characters can act within characters. Yeah, uh, what I would say is um, act as characters because whenever, of whenever a character, whenever plot damages character, it would be that um, that that um, that like a plot problem stems from a stupid decision that a character makes. Um, or where the plot doesn't resolve. Well, alternatively, it, it would be that the plot being so balked prompts characters to make decisions that are out of character. Um, but that... I've got but, one. i got one. Yeah. So what if, what if you had a character make an extremely rational decision that was uh, well-reasoned, logical, and within their character, and then inexplicably, as a result, a different thing happened, and therefore all of the other characters now had their view of that original character impacted um i guess it's uh i'm not sure i i, I think it might depend on how that character reacts to what happens um like because that I would be the be, plot failing the characters yeah the plot i guess it would be does that now result in like if the character says that's absolutely absurd i did everything right and i got penalized i'm not taking moral accountability for this that is absurd that that might be more interesting as a response than if he said, wow, I really am a fool. What a fool I am that this plan that was perfect and had a 99.99% .99 chance of success was super well-reasoned and smart, was bad. I'm a failure. I'm an idiot, you know? And then that, and then that's like where the plot goes. Maybe it'd be a situation where the character has come to a conclusion that is the consequence of an absolutely absurd contrivance against him. Uh, but I guess I'm still not sure what that would mean in terms of compromising the character. I I, I actually not sure. Yeah, I'm I'm not gonna I'm not gonna rule it out. But my tentative answer is, I don't think a plot can supersede a character. No, it would only ever be that the character writing is bad. Um, but Part of it is because I don't know how it's but... possible. Maybe it is, and I just haven't. Because the course we're this live stream and we're thinking off the top of our heads in the moment. But I don't see how it could be possible for that to happen. I just don't. I don't know a scenario where that could happen. I yeah, can't envision I, I that. Can't either. I can't. 
maybe I'd have to brainstorm more. Maybe someone could give me an example or a, a hypothetical because I just flat that, out don't know. That was an interesting question. Though. Yeah. Hey, crew, would you consider ignorance or stupidity the best assets to have in a Lovecraftian setting? Ignorance. Um, I feel like it would be ignorance. It's got to be ignorance, yeah. You have you yeah. just can't understand what's happening. Yeah, you or you're had to do you, this. not not even understanding it, not even being aware of it. Yeah, you can't go insane from trying to understand if you can't understand in the first place. Appreciate you all massively. Ciao, and thank um, you. Yeah, I just watched Cinema Wins video on Lord of the Rings. He kept arguing that the theatrical was better than extended. What? Fuck are really? you? What the fuck? Really? I'm. I, wow. I'm, I'll be honest. I'm not even sure me? I believe it because surely he knows that that's like that's a. No that's, one thinks that. Nobody. It's thinks the one that. uniting factor for all humans. Yeah. <laughs> I do not understand. I, if I just don't. Why would he? Why would you do that? I don't get it. I can't even imagine what the the only reasoning that I can think of total good faith here is that it's too long and no movie should be that long. That's the only thing that I could think of that has some basis in reality, if you could call it that as an argument, maybe. But damn. Yeah, he's got videos for a lot of them. Um. Yeah, that's surprising. I've just I just don't hear that take very often, you know. I've yeah, never it's, heard it's it. Totally, I've incorrect. never heard it. I don't know. Like... I've never heard that before. Um, I mean, he's not a bright lad, so, <laughs> so... I guess if anyone was going to make the argument, it would be cinema. Cinema wins, but I like someone in chat said, "Wow, cinema sids wrong again." Shocker! It's like it's not cinema sids. <laughs> but he's also wrong often, but that's fine. Uh, Bane posting is a form of art. Fact. Alright. Can't be disagreeing with that. Um, art isn't art until someone says it is. Um, true. I don't know about that. Yeah, I don't know. That seems like a weird metric. Yeah, I, I don't, that's not true, though. Beauty is in the eye of the beholder. Something is art when it is viewed as art. When it's viewed no. as art, feels closer to something, I mean, but again, I don't feel like just, there's missing. Yeah, I think the problem we run into with something like that is just like so. It's just everything, really. Then, mm -hmm. an elephant was trained to paint a picture. It doesn't comprehend it as art, but we as humans would say it's art. I don't know. An elephant might be able to comprehend. Maybe an it elephant can comprehend it as art. I don't Elephants know. How I mean, smart that it, it doesn't have to think of it as the word art. Like it doesn't have to. Well, as long as I it, feel like it yeah. often appreciates the aesthetic for reasons beyond its survival. If it, yeah, um, if it is expressing it, so even if it doesn't know necessarily the depth of what that means, if it is expressing itself in how it feels through some medium, then that would be art. Yeah. yeah. People can people can make art while not thinking they're making art. They could just be just idly yeah. kind of on just passive autopilot mode as some brains do. Like like when you're driving to work, you just don't even you're just there. You're at work because you've driven to work so often. You know, it, it's just yeah. what about it, you just sort of what about yeah. doing it when you're sleeping? If you're sleepwalking, yeah. Would that, like, if an artist slept, walked, and then painted something, it didn't have to be, you know, it could just be like, blah, blah, there's squiggles and stuff, but would that, would that be art? I don't see why it wouldn't, if, because, like, well, I, yeah, like, if uh, if you slept, walk, and you painted, like, the, the roof of the Sistine Chapel, just because you weren't cognizant of you doing it doesn't mean you've, you haven't still created ex something that still is still expressing a yourself. That I wonder value. if. Does it not count at all? There's got to be some level of being cognizant, right? Like, it's a subconscious decision to move over there and i would i think that would be the argument you make even though you're sleepwalking you. you're still yeah, yeah. i think so that's how you could argue it you'd be like there is an intentionality of some form it might just not be on this um you know well i mean if i drop a camera and it snaps well, a beautiful it's... picture of a landscape d just because i was accidental it doesn't mean anything like if, if i pick it up and it looks really great and i decide to like print it off then it's still 
it's still like odd. Mm, that one's more interesting. To that, well, so I would say that recognizing it as beautiful and making a like a, a painting of it or that sort of thing is more artistic than the thing itself. Yeah, because right. It was, like that you you've it's identified not an expression. something of beauty here and you've decided I want to I want to do something with it. Um because yeah, we talked about this for a the, bit on that subject, but like there's the this this blurry line is really difficult to figure out where something goes from just being a thing to being a, a piece of art. Mm -hmm. Cuz you could have someone in that scenario, right? They drop the camera, it snaps a picture, and it could be that that is a very beautiful picture. And someone could also very very um deliberately right right next to them take a picture that is beautiful and you could put them side by side and ask people which one is art and which one is incidental and they wouldn't be able to tell the difference but it no. wouldn't change which one is and isn't art well, yeah and equally you could have someone take a very deliberate photo of just black like just blank yeah and you put those two well, together. Yeah, they say all that. It, yeah. it represents the da 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 of how I feel yeah. because of this is it. <laughs> well, that's, that's art. I mean, that yeah. is art. Art is not a it is not a high bar to be art. No, it's and I, I guess that's why defining stuff as art or not art is not that important. I feel like it's always a question it's, it's, of the craft. Yeah, it's, it's it was very, very much a thought experiment for us. Um, but like oh, yeah. there was still one or two people who were just like, "Move on." It's like, all right, calm down. It's just a discussion. Just just thinking about how words work. They're and talking stuff. about art. Stop, Stop it. it. <laughs> We're talking about art. Don't do it. Um. Have a look at male bowerbirds, lads. They decorate their nests to attract mates. Well, like magpies. Male, male bowerbirds. bowerbirds. Yeah. Male bowerbird. Oh, the little uh, bowerbird. How do you oh, spell that? Bower it's B O W E R. Yeah. Oh, look at that little birder. Yeah, he's cute. Yeah, they have oh, they I, have really yeah, cool looking these nests. Guys. Well, yeah, they get cool for birds. They like the color blue. <laughs> they really like. Uh, they like, like the color blue. There's there's also one called a flame bower bird that's red and and uh, yellow. Looks great. Some of these nests are really badass. elaborate for yeah. a bird. Yeah, They're they art. look really cool. They kind of look like the entrance to a dungeon or something. They do. Yeah. Yeah. Are these nests art? I mean, I guess I, they I would guess... be right. It's, it's the expression of the bird. Think that we, it's the expression yeah, of the bird. Yeah. It has to be right. Um, and I'm fine. And, and I guess art. there's a question of our appreciation of it as something that's really pretty, even though we didn't make it. What does that uh? What does that mean? You know. Well, we do that with like landscapes, don't we? We do. I, I, people I make art very deliberately example. all the time that expresses themselves deeply, and it just looks like shit. <laughs> so <laughs> you know what, Rags? I don't here. disagree with that. <laughs> yep. Look at this bird mm. go, making this cool little nest. I guess, uh, is it used to attract mates, was it? Or, um... Apparently, yeah. I'm guessing the, the, oh, so, the, the, the fin so let's, uh, bird. Oh, this, this might be an interesting thought. So peacocks will display all of their, uh, like, their feathers to try and attract mates, you know? Like, well, they'll yeah. do these elaborate dances and things. Is that art? Is that art? When, like, a bird well, does dance press its mate? Interpretive yeah, dances art and, and purely, dances art. So. Well, I agree, but I guess the question is, if a bird is doing it, and the reason why they're doing it is to attract a mate, what what does it mean in terms of an expression of, I guess, the bird's desires, or um, or I guess you know we, we wouldn't define it as art, like if a lion left a a carcass, right? Like if of a, a like a zebra or a, a bison or something, um. We wouldn't consider that to be art. That was just something that was the byproduct of an animal's uh, attempt to survive. Would we? So what does that mean for like a bird ask. doing a dance that it uses to to attract mates? So are pickup lines art? Uh well, I guess that. I mean, you could say that in a certain sense, right? If you've crafted a really witty line, that's artistic expression of some sort. I don't even think it has to be witty. Oh, well, sure. It I, I guess. Seems like... I guess what I'm saying is that that's like the intent, right? But if if you are creating something, um, I, I guess that's that's what I'm trying to figure out. How much does the intent matter? Um, 
because yeah. both are intent. The intent for both of them is to is principally to a, obtain some sort of. Yeah, but yes. I guess how far down do we want to boil this? You know, like if when it comes to a lot of the things that humans do in general, like um, more basal desires. Well, yeah, like if if I go to work and I have work, um, you know, and I I go to work and I have a job that pays me a lot of money, and I just I don't know, like it's accounting or something, uh, and I'm really good at it but I'm making money. And the main reason why I'm doing that is like social capital. Um, does that mean that like my work is art or, or like, you, uh, I, I feel like I'm going somewhere with this. Like somebody could imagine that the work that they do is art in how well they're able to do it and how efficient it is and how easy it is for people to understand. Like it's, it's their craft in the same way that the carpenter making a really nice looking table would definitely, that's like art. Um, I, w I would does say that apply that's to someone... other aspects of your life, you know, like, um, because if someone's trying to just make money, then they might, as a result, like it might be an emergent attribute might come out of that. That is, that could be art. Right. But I feel like it, like in the sense of the, the peacock feathers or the, like the pickup lines, there is, there's more of an, a necessity to express oneself in that. I, I guess I'm just trying to figure out how much your intent behind what you're doing matters. Like, let's say, I guess, boil it down to you make a painting that's really nice. And the purpose for doing it is you want to impress a woman or something. Um, that's, that's like all that you care about. And your and the way that you make that work is entirely about convincing her about how awesome you are, essentially. Um, that would be the same in a certain sense as like a peacock doing a little dance to impress its mate. Uh, if, if, uh, are we going to say that what the peacocks, the peacocks dance is art? Um, I guess that's all I'm trying to figure out. If a peacock does a know. dance and it's only to impress a mate and it doesn't really care at all about the aesthetics other than that, does that count as art? Does it not get yeah, does it, well? Does it not care about it being an expression of itself? It just does it because that's what it does. It's not. It doesn't I, maybe really it's think not about it. As, as yeah, it's not developed do. enough mentally to. Well, like it doesn't recognize it kind of grasp dance. that it concept is, of expression. It is behavior that it does to achieve um, a survival objective. Um, it you know it it doesn't interpret it as a dance. We do because we're humans. Join us next time for the discussion on what is art. <laughs> uh, we yeah 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 so yeah we we're just yeah art 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 art. Try and tell us that nobody thinks those machine videos are not art. Those are things of beauty. Machine videos. Machine videos. I'm not sure what that's I'm referencing. Sure that. Oh yeah, yeah I don't know. That Cinema Winds walked back. The Lord of the Rings take a bit. <laughs> Ah. I fucking hope so. <laughs> in fact, he made it in the first place. You're wondering, like, you should not be talk. Why are you talking about movies? Dude, it's rare to come across a movie where you check the, all the deleted scenes and you're like, wow, that was a really great scene. Wow, that was great, too. Wow, that was great. And it's just like, that's kind of what you get with Lord of the Rings Extended. You're just like, holy shit, these are really good. They add yeah, a lot. they're all good. I don't know. I can't remember if they're all good. <laughs> I'm pretty sure they are, though, because there's just not. I think they I, are. I don't Some of them thinking... are phenomenal. Oh, yeah. What if someone writes an entire book in a made up language that has absolutely no translation? I guess it's they're not a me. language then. Wait, no known translation? Like, if we don't know what the symbols mean? Well, this or, is kind of a weird uh, thing. We made no, up language no with no translation. I mean, all so, languages, all are, languages made up, are made up, uh, and... but d d d well, it's still an expression. I'm trying to. I feel like it's, just treat the question for what it means. It doesn't like, need say all languages made up. Fucking irrelevant. He's obviously talking about a made up whether that person. No one else knows about. That's why we kept. Yeah, we, that's the way, where we kept talking. No, you made fun of it twice. It's just like why don't you just respond it's to the actual once. fucking thing. No, twice because you went after the. Uh, 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 you, you made a joke twice. It was you did a different one first. Where you said, um, "If it's uh, the no translation thing." In terms of 
like I, it, that was a clarification of not a, there's no translation. Like we don't have the ability to translate it because originally I thought it meant like it was like it didn't have meaning behind it. No, it's really straightforward. And isn't it? It someone like, makes up of their own language and then nobody else has translated it. Neither have they. Yeah, but I understand it now that I've clarified it to myself. Well, it's just literal. What he said. Yeah. So I don't know why you'd be confused. Like, what, what is there to be confused about? I don't understand. I I guess I would have to go back and examine all of my thoughts in that moment, and okay. I, I I have no <laughs> idea why it might have been a little confusing at that one time, which is why I stopped to clarify to myself what it meant. I don't. I'm, I don't know I'm glad you got there go. in the end. Um, but yeah, as to the question, I don't know if this regards does it count as I mean, art it took or whatever. A, just a moment, but uh, okay. Um. Yeah, it would. It would count as art. Well, if that, I don't know if that's the question, because they've just said, what if? What if they did? Um, yeah. I mean, it, it's, it would still, it would be art. You don't need someone to translate it in order for it to be art. You don't need an observer for it to be art. Well, again, I don't know if, I have no idea what the question is, because if it, I mean, especially if it's a language from that person that nobody else knows how it works. It's like, that's got to be considered art, right? I don't see why not. But if it's regarding something else, then I'm just going to have to... I just don't know what the context was at that point in the conversation. If lightning were to strike the floor and create a beautiful pattern, is that then art even though there is no human intention to create art. Well, I feel so, like we just apply that to landscapes in general. We um, tend to say no on that one. Them, they, just, they just happen. Well, no, it would be like if you take a picture of it or something. Um, yeah, because... I feel the... like that has to be it, because then there's an intention... Ah, oh, damn, but I don't know what intentionality... Like, you, you've, you've changed it from just a thing that existed. Ah, uh, but then how far do we want to go? Does that apply <laughs> to, like, all humans, you know? Like, yeah, <laughs> it, get, it gets it gets and operate within the universe. So everything that we create is a natural byproduct of just the universe's natural progression. Maybe you just have to concede that art has really blurry edges, and this, that's the best we can do. Yeah, I think so. Um, assuming Peacemaker is getting its own episode due to sheer greatness, every frame of Peacemaker. Oh, uh, no. <laughs> um. We we were very impressed with the episode and a half, and uh, I've just my the people in like the 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 circles surrounding our circles. I just haven't heard much recommendation, you know. It feels like um because the show did reasonably well, right? But I feel like he, I didn't hear a whole lot about it as it was progressing. All I all I fucking know really is just that that Justice League thing happened at the end and it pissed off and the Snyder people. A lot of people, yeah. What Justice League thing? Oh, there's a cameo at the end of a uh, Peacemaker where the Justice League show up, but there's no Batman or Cyborg. Um, or Wonder Woman. Well, yeah, Wonder Woman. Superman Superman are in the it. shadows, and it's only Aquaman and Flash who have a conversation. Oh, yeah. like uh, Jason Ezra Miller. Miller and Ezra yeah, Miller. Ezra, yeah, because that those two are still, I guess. Gal Gadot's probably really expensive or difficult to get, and those two are still actively involved, but otherwise, everybody else. Why would they be... Up, uh, their, their, their contracts are, like, done. It's finished, right? Well, just, I guess the thing with, with Ben Affleck Batman is we still don't... The Flash, he's definitely in that, but that's, like, the last time that he's going to be playing Batman, from what I understand. Was he contractually um, obligated for that, or did he just do it as a favor? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I'm not sure. Um... I because I think uh, isn't isn't the rumor at this point that it's just going to be like a hard reset for the DCEU that we're going to retcon in um, right. Michael Keaton Batman and retcon out uh, Batfleck Batman like basically a means of them keeping the things that made them money and getting rid of the things that, that didn't. And Wait, all, my, isn't Michael Keaton like people who don't want to do it anymore? Isn't he like approaching seventy or something? He he is getting old. Um, but uh, he's in he's in that Batgirl HBO movie. Um, so right. it may well be that they're going to pass the torch to her in the DC. That's EU. not going to work. 
Um, I mean, it could if she was a really great character, you know? I don't even Who know knows? that it would work if she were a really great character. Oh, That's you, a tough you one. you mean, like, from a marketing perspective of, like, hey, you're not going to get Batman, but you're going to get Batgirl? It's like, hmm. <laughs> like, it's... I don't know how, how yeah, good the, of a the... pitch that is. The way you'd think, even this might not work, but like passing it down to a younger Batman, even that's risky, because it's like, you've really got to get someone who can carry the weight, because uh, I think everyone's well, going to love seeing Michael Batman, Keaton be yeah. Batman again, yeah. yeah. But obviously it's that's not be... sustainable, so... No, not for, for a long-running franchise. You wouldn't think so, no. Or maybe they'll keep him around as a mentor character. Maybe he'll take on a bit of a, like, maybe a, a Nick like Fury Alfred? role. Oh, yeah. The team together. Yeah, if they do, um, if they're doing Justice League shit, yeah. Um, well, it it seems confusing because I've got like <laughs> Black Adam's got Justice Society people in it, and they got no bat. They're not. They got no Superman either. But they're going to be introducing Supergirl, um, probably on a long contract as well. I would imagine. Um, and what what else are they doing? Um, they doing a Blue Beetle movie, and I guess it's just like. It feels like you've got kind of this weird hodgepodge of characters and like a Green Lantern project that's been talked about for years and nothing's materialized yet. God, it's a complete um, mess. And you just don't even know what they're going to pull. It's absolutely, it's absolutely a mess. And it feels like they're going to have a Justice League that's odd. Like at least with the Avengers, you had a, an Avengers team that was comprised of a lot of the sort of original Avengers team. Um you know you don't you don't need the x-men or um fantastic four or even spider-man to like make an avengers film you still have at least enough of the core characters whereas with this one you've only got what like three at this point that you you have for that team what's the um, um the story again of where batman is like because he's old it's the animated it's one of the animated ones right where he pulls a gun because he's he almost loses a fight isn't that the dark knight returns or my no, I'm, is it Batman Beyond? What's the Batman where he's old? Oh, oh, you mean where it's Terry McGinnis in the future? That's Batman Beyond, yeah. I wonder if they'll consider doing that, because Michael Keaton's maybe, probably the right maybe, age to yeah. do that, right? Um, I guess he's, yeah, they, but I guess they want him as part of this main universe, so they're probably not going to do that, I guess. Oh, I mean, yeah, I didn't mean, like, right now, I meant maybe later. Um, I don't maybe, know. yeah. And the, the thing is, like, we, we can't even make predictions based on their limitations for timelines and who's alive and who's dead and stuff anymore, because they can just do whatever. They, they can do whatever they want, as we are about to see with this movie, that they're going to pull whatever they can. Feels so desperate, doesn't it? Hey, well, people like those Tim Burton Batman films, right? We can, you know, like, people like Michael Keaton Batman. Let's get him in there. And, yeah, and it feels they... really interesting now that Batman, the Batman is in its own separate continuity. It's not part of this universe. It's its own thing. And it's like the, the most hyped project that they have coming out. Um... <laughs> oh my god, bring back Alicia Silverstone as Bat... Was she Batgirl or Batwoman? She was Batgirl. She was Batgirl, Batgirl. yeah. <laughs> Could you imagine they brought in Batwoman? <laughs> what are these movies? Be fucking uh, insane. I doubt it. <laughs> so Batgirl and Batwoman are both in the comics, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but Batgirl's been around for a lot longer than Batwoman. Batgirl's Batwoman? Barbara Gordon. She was around in she was around for a long time and then uh in the killing joke she um she when she got shot she was stuck in a wheelchair, so she became Oracle for a while. Yeah, I know about that. Chair. And then uh and then in the new fifty two relaunch they made her Batgirl again. Uh, I think Batwoman was made in, like, the 2000s, I think. So she's much newer. Suit me up, Uncle Alfred. I remember that. That was weird. The whole thing was weird. <laughs> the, the, yeah. Batman and Robin just desperately yeah. wanted to launch Batgirl, I guess. I don't know. Maybe. Yeah, maybe that was their plan. But then they decided, nah, you know what, let's bide our time and do Catwoman 2004. Oh my god, yeah. Success. That film was expensive. That film cost like $100 million. It's, it's really weird to think that they were like, oh, Batman and Robin, way too goofy, insane. Catwoman, though? Yeah, this will work. Yeah. <laughs> and then a year later, they did uh, Batman Begins, so. Yeah, when Nolan, he's... It's kind of funny that... That was very grounded for then. Very grounded for now is probably the Batman, right? We're, but, but very grounded compare, for now. Would be Batman, yeah. If you compare them, we've we've gotten darker, more gritty. The word gritty yes. must have been said in every review for the Batman. 
Well, it's it's uh, I I think they yeah mostly talk about how it's dark and and gritty and stuff. You know, <laughs> I've that, seen that's the triumph of this film, isn't it? <laughs> there's several reviews saying like in a time where things aren't that great, it's not cool to have a movie that's very dour. It's just like shut up. That's like why would you even review something like <laughs> that? It's not allowed to be what it is because of the time it came out. Yeah, it's like, okay, review it in 10 years then. Let me know what you thought of it then so that you're not so biased based on what you're feeling right now. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Like, flat, you, you said that they're, they're all out in the end of this year, right? The, the DC ones? They, yeah, they got five movies coming out this year. Um, three of them within the span of like a month at the are end you, of the year. Planning to see them all in cinema, or are you gonna? Uh um, because of course I saw Batman. Uh, I think that Black would make sense, Adam. but like, yeah, well, of course I don't I love Batman. But like, Black I don't see Adam, you seeing Aquaman two, for example. Like, I can't imagine you're going to see that. Are you, or are you? Uh maybe it might be interesting to see what James Wan would do a second time around, probably with more creative, like. The thing is, is that there are aspects of, like, James Wan's films that I do like. They're usually visually interesting. Um, and hey, maybe it'll be really stupid in a funny way again. I don't know. I, I don't know, though. And The Flash. See, for like, me, I probably am going to watch that because of Michael Keaton's Batman. Yeah, that's why I'd be interested in seeing that. But um, as for Aquaman, like, I want to almost want to save it for, like, an EFAM movies recording, you know? Right. Might be a good idea. Um, um, and I guess funny. Black Adam, it's like, Dr. Fate's cool, and Pierce Brosnan and Dr. Fate, it's like, that could be, I guess something else that works in that film's favor is, I don't know that we've seen Dwayne Johnson play, like, a villain role before, ah, well, kind of like an anti-hero role, I guess, um, it, yeah. it feels like it would be the most different role that he's ever done. And he so was an anti-hero in Doom. He wanted to. Oh yeah, uh, right. True, true. He, yeah, I wanted to complete. We haven't the seen movie. that in a long time, though. You know, <laughs> we it's haven't been, like, seen Doom in a long time. Last anti-hero role. Dude, Doom was great. Uh, yeah. Both Dooms were amazing. Where he says, I wonder if Black Adam can live up to that. You know, oh, Scorpion King too. I keep forgetting these are like twenty years ago. In the last ten years, he's mostly just played the good guy. He's mostly just played Jungle Explorer. <laughs> he's yeah. played that it's like ten thousand times. That showed four, yeah, the four pictures <laughs> that are from man. four different movies. They look exactly. The <laughs> he explores same. jungles like that's his typecast. Like what the fuck? Do you he's think he ever gets confused board. standing in front of that green screen in the same outfit? Is <laughs> like, what, do you think he has Wait, like? What movie is this again? <laughs> yeah, like what, what, what script did I? What what what? what? Was it, did, wasn't he Judy to the Center of the Earth too? Was, he, was there a yeah, jungle in that? Yeah, the Mysterious Island, that was in the jungle. Oh, there you go, there's probably a jungle. The center of the Earth. It uh, was in the jungle. Yeah, yeah. It definitely Yeah, was. Journey to the Center of the Earth. It, I think in the original story, there's like a big subterranean jungle dinosaur. Yeah, but dinosaur. The, first one was, um, the first one was uh, Brendan Fraser. The second one was Dwayne Johnson. Yeah, yeah. God, what a weird... Yeah, so... I, and it, you know, it's funny, it's like... Uh, Dwayne Johnson is like a, a serious, grounded, like maybe even villainous character. I was just like, I don't see it. I'd have to see him do it so that I can picture it. Oh, someone else mentioned in uh in Get Smart, the remake of Get Smart with Steve Carell, he was the bad guy. Yeah, I, I guess that. I guess more so. I, 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 I saw it. it when it came out. It's it's fine. Yeah, I was gonna yeah. say I don't remember anything about it though, but I know I've seen it. I don't remember I much remember about it either. Show. I remember one joke, I think, vaguely. It was like the joke in the trailer. I can't... Yeah. I remember Get Smart, the TV show, a lot better. Hmm. Uh, was it Anne Hathaway with Steve Carell? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The movie uh, I, Robot I... has a good example of this. If a robot paints a picture, is it art? Did it create it wholly, or was it programmed to just duplicate? Well, that you don't even need a robot for that. You could just say a printer, right? Did the printer create, or if it copies, if right. we if we cut short, because if we're not going to worry about robots consciousness, if we're cutting that out, we're just talking about it yeah. running on a, a a script it was given. Then yeah, it's no different than necessarily like did the printer create the art? Like well, I mean it just it just converted it from the digital form to a physical one, I guess. Um, but again, that's going to come into loads of definitions. It gets super complicated. Humans are programmed. No, 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 don't say that. That, that complicates you know, everything careful. again. That gets, yeah, gets you in trouble. <laughs> uh, you guys need to look up homeostatic property clusters. 
Things are often agreed to share properties that you don't always share the same properties. What's that called? Homeostatic? Property clusters. Property cluster. When mechanisms exist that cause the properties to cluster by ensuring the deviations from the cluster have a low chance of persisting. Um, I, uh, da, 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 da. So, so here's a is goodness, a homeostatic property cluster. So what's the abstract of this? Uh, in How to Be a Moral Realist, Richard Boyd proposes that moral properties such as moral goodness have the same metaphysical structure as properties that define natural kinds. In particular, he proposes that moral goodness is constituted by, the, by a homeostatic property cluster. This hypothesis plays a key role in Boyd's defense of naturalistic moral realism. He contends that if that, 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 that would be in, uh, Yeah, I had to look deeper into that and soak it all up. Problem is, I don't, I don't even know, know what it relates to in terms of what we were talking about. Yeah. At what point? I just, I just don't know. Um, someone in chat said a bit late, but Cinema Wins' argument was that the theatrical was more cinematic and had better pacing. I, uh, I don't like pacing arguments. Very nebulous pacing. Yeah. yeah. Very nebulous. Felt better paced. It's like that's all I'm going to get out of you, isn't it? <laughs> like, that's that's as right. far as it goes. As for more cinematic, that even that, like if you were in this call right now, I'd be like, do I even dare ask you what you mean by that? More cinematic. Uh, the elevator, sorry, the elephant in the video was just trained to make brush strokes by a human. To the elephant, it's just following orders. It isn't doing it creatively. Well, that'd be interesting. I don't know how it? we can know that, though. Like, so if Fringy told me, paint a face, and then I do it, does that... Yeah, like, how is that not... How is that still I not suppose hard? it's a bit more specific, because it would be my idea of what a face is. It would be, you show me the strokes, I don't even register that as a face, you simply say, right, repeat right. those strokes. But still, that's, I wonder, yeah, yeah maybe, that, maybe that is just like the printer, technically, because it's not actually... The process is just me copy and paste, not me um, creating, per se. But then again, yeah. you know, I don't even want to say that because I am creative. Blah, blah, blah. Too, too scary and complicated. Uh, nuke it all. Too confusing. <laughs> um, not all definitions need have sharp binary boundaries. Many things can more or less within a category by degree, i.e. a dog is very much more of an agent than an ant. Same could go for the ant. Well, we all know that. Like, we just like to dig talk, in, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, we talked about this in our... Um, mm -hmm. I think we talked about it. Yeah. Yeah. I would argue that that's like where everyone starts. It's like, yeah, we all know that there's categories that have blurry parts of where we move from one thing to another, but sometimes it's fun to dig in and see if we can figure out where the line is. Um, mm -hmm. It's really fucking hard with art. Fringy, you're Australian, so tell me, what do you think about Bowerbird's nest art, also high rags? Well, Hi. I think you heard it. It's cool as shit. Yeah. Are they uh, Australian? I didn't then? know that they were Australian, though. Um, hmm. or maybe maybe it doesn't even matter it's just as an Australian as a total aside <laughs> what do you think about Bowerbird's nest does it like eat people or have laser eyes or something it might be Australian Kookaburras don't like eat people they just chill out <laughs> no. well not <laughs> one I like the outrage almost I'm just like that one doesn't eat people most exactly. of them do but not that one groups of them eat people that hmm. they'll just they're basically air piranhas. <laughs> air piranhas, could you imagine? Mm. Piranhas fashion a bunch of wings and fly out. Isn't that like the the fucking meme from I'd, the other guys? Uh, fashion... Oh, the, no, it was it was that uh, Tuna. Tuna, uh, yeah. I, I remember, I, I like that movie. Um, it was, I like yeah, it too, like yeah. Mark Wahlberg says, if I was a Tuna, I like, if I was a Tuna, I would... Oh no, if I was a lion and you were a tuna, I would go out of my way to like attack you, even if you weren't in my food chain. <laughs> yeah. And then um and then he said something like Will Ferrell said, Oh, you know, like you you know, you want to take on a fight with like a three hundred pound tuna in his territory, you lose. You lose every time. <laughs> and you know what? We'll get a taste for lion blood. <laughs> we'll you know, lion tastes good. We will fashion 
you know, mechanical legs to like come on and, it, <laughs> oh, and then he says like, well, how are you going to breathe? It's like, we will construct a set of breathing apparatus with Kelt. <laughs> 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 and then I think I think Mark Wahlberg just pours coffee on him. Yeah, I like that movie. There was a joke as well, and um, when it was it was uh yeah, there was Dwayne Johnson and and uh, Samuel L. Jackson that like aim for the bushes and they just jump off. They the just kill themselves. <laughs> There's no bushes anywhere. Do <laughs> like, you know why? You know why that joke is so good because it's perfectly representative of anybody who says like, yeah, of course they survive. It's protagonist. Yeah, it's like that's what that joke around. is. It's like, of course well, we'll survive. Is, We're the main characters. They're, they're the main characters, except they're not. This is yeah. the other guys. We're following the non-main character cops on their investigation. Yeah, yeah. I real. Oh man, I want to rewatch that movie. <laughs> I'll rewatch that. Yeah, it's funny. Um, yeah. The uh, the I it, saw that, and I just I don't remember anything about it. I'd have to see it again. Michael Keaton. Oh, that, is that, there, that was um, desk pop, right? Yeah, that's Michael Keaton was the uh, Michael okay. Keaton I was, think I remember uh, some the, bits. Yeah. Like the chief. lieutenant or the sergeant or the chief, whatever. Yeah. Yeah, he also has a job in like Kroger or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Do you remember like the final scene? I think Will Farrell is like, you know, shot in the arm or something, and Michael Keaton runs up to him and he's like, Oh god. And he's like, Oh, I think I'm gonna be alright. He goes, He's dead. <laughs> 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 Lots of funny bits in that movie. Uh, yeah. Longman, would you say your critique videos are, in a way, art? And if yes, is it art of the longest degree? Well, it's not exactly the longest, but it's pretty long, I think. And yeah, definitely art, right? I don't see how they wouldn't be. I absolutely would consider it to be art. Critiques. Very much expressing myself. Um, why does it make me... L oh, sorry. Why does it make laugh... There's no me in there, just why does it make laugh? Uh, when I see people use at in a super chat, I don't think they know how it works. Oh, do you mean like, because they're like, oh, you'll miss it if I don't at him. <laughs> Maybe they put at in it to let me know who they're directing the question at. That's, yeah, that can work. You don't, in the, in the, in the, um, the chat? No, so they're saying like people put at Mauler in a super chat and it's like that's unnecessary, but in some ways it might be more necessary in the sense that they've got a question they want it directed at one of us three rather than all of us. Mm -hmm. Oh, look at that sly fucker that just, yeah, just, just, yeah look at <laughs> you go. Um, so if a tree falls in the middle of the woods and a deaf person is around, does the tree make a sound? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if this is a joke or something. <laughs> I would yeah. imagine it is. If, we're, if you don't so have eyes like and things exist, and... do they exist? Well, someone you know? brought like... up, um, someone brought this up in the chat, but it's just like, you know if they say, like, if something fell and nobody hears it, does it make sense? It's like, well, the sound waves will have an effect. Like, they will, they they will do they just, things. They just won't register. They're things. Well, but, yeah. like, yeah, they, in a they sense, they, re they are registered by the blades of grass, you know? They will be. Like, it's just not in the same yeah. way that we would register it. But, like, I don't know why that would determine shit all. I don't know why... Mm -hmm. It's weird, man. Hi, Rags. Hello. I mean no harm. Blue milk, rhino milk, and now bug juice. Is that narrative tripling? Bug juice? <laughs> narrative tripling. Um, yeah, I'm not aware of the bug juice one. Maybe it's new. Bug juice was like a... It was like a, like a sugar drink. Like a kid's sugar drink called bug juice. It's like a Kool-Aid kind of thing. It's called Bug Juice. Hmm. I don't know if you had it over there. Uh, not familiar, but we might have. I don't know. Hello, Muller and Co. I did it. After a year, I finally caught up with EFAP. Here's to more. Well, hope you had fun. And yes, more is on the way. Including this very stream. I'd love to see what you guys think of Run, Hide, Fight, the Daily Wire movie. Yes, I really think it's carried by its writing and talent extremely well. If you can't find it sailing the high seas, the Daily Wire is having a 40% off deal right now. I mean, I'd be interested just to see it, to see... Uh, I still haven't seen Drinker's they review of it, make. I meant to watch that. But, um... Yeah, it'd be interesting to see yeah, how they did, you know. Uh, if you want my two cents, art is anything that required creative intent to exist. Stories are sequences of events that deal with conflict resolution. 
conflict resolution. That's an additional part that's not necessarily in there typically, but um, I could see why you would involve it. Mm -hmm. How do you deal with that um, with something like Empire Strikes Back, though? Because would you argue certain conflicts have been resolved, but certain ones haven't? And if so, what does that mean? Yeah, where are we at with that? And then, obviously, couldn't we just... Couldn't we have stories that don't resolve? Because they're like, part two, coming out because next that's time. The point. Well, that's the point. There is no resolution. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, what is the theme of a one-legged man trying to take a shit in the wilderness? A one-legged man trying to take a shit in the wilderness. I guess he would need really good balance, like always. Uh, let me see. I mean, yeah, I have I to see it, right? What's, what's, the pun? what's the... Oh, is this not a... Oh, is there not an answer coming? Like, it's a joke? No, it, I, I, thought, think I think it's just a question. <laughs> oh, I thought this was a, a like a setup for a, a joke, and I was thinking of all the idioms and stuff that we have, and, a, and what pun could be... Yeah, Because uh, it, it, it sounds like the setup for a joke. All right, well... It does sound a bit like the setup for a joke, doesn't it? I don't... What's the theme? I don't know. You could have all kinds of different themes. It depends on what happens and how the characters feel about that sort of plot. We'll call uh, it human it, nature. I don't know what the theme is. I don't. Yeah, I, I don't. Uh, I don't know what the theme is yet. I need more info. I need to see what happens. Yeah, we'd have to see I don't know this what the story. Trying you know, to tell me. Or yeah. read it. Uh, watch more SpongeBob season one through three and Phineas and Ferb. I remember Phineas and Ferb. That was kind of a cool show. It was good. Uh, I, don't I think remember I really it. enjoying that show. What was it about? It, um, I think it's. I it think was it's the good. idea was uh, there's a hundred and four days of summer vacation, um, and school comes along just to end it. Uh, so you know you gotta. I can't remember the rest of the lyrics for the intro. The idea is on summer vacation, Phineas and Ferb decide to do something really cool and exciting every day of uh, of their summer vacation. It, yeah. And Phineas meanwhile, and Ferb are like these mini geniuses. And yeah. so they get up to shenanigans while their parents are away, and their sister and tries to catch them, but she never can. Yeah, and there's Candace. Harry, and then, who's uh, a platypus. Harry, yeah, Harry the platypus is their pet, and he's a secret agent who uh, gets into conflict with... Oh, Dr. damn. Doofenshmirtz. Yeah, that's his name. That's right. Um, yeah, it's cool. CEO of Doofenshmirtz Evil Incorporated. Yeah. It's really clever. It's a really clever show. It is, actually, um, from what I remember. Yeah, it, it's very enjoyable. I, I, I like it quite a bit. Oh, neat. It's better than Bojack. Um, what was it? Uh, and Spongebob, the first couple of seasons, that's... I remember I only ever watched that show sporadically. I, uh, I watched a lot more Cartoon Network than Nickelodeon. Yeah, I think... I, 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 I got a I, pretty decent mix growing up. I don't know my Spongebob as well as my Simpsons at all, but um, I, th I no. think that's typically understood, is it? The first three of the good Spongebob seasons? Yeah, because so. it's still going, isn't it? Oh god, is it? Ooh. I think it is. It's like been going for 20 years. I haven't even looked in. I don't know if... I don't know what's going on there. I, I don't know. Um, this says, not god glasses, John. Privilege goggles. I'm starting to wonder where these super chats have come from now. It's like, was this <laughs> was this a catch up? That's what I listed these as, but now I'm like, well, what's happening? Hello, massives. I just wanted to pop in to say hello. I first discovered EFAB around ninety eight, and I'm almost caught up to you all. Just finished one five nine. Almost forgot my peace offering. Hi, rags. Oh, hello. My goodness, that was a bit yeah, of a that's, that's aggressive quite a bit. super chat right before that moment, you know. Um, but yeah, uh, hope you've been having fun. The idea of watching all of them Fapparinos in a row, I just, I just, I just, it would be quite an adventure, I'm sure. I'm yeah. sure, yeah. Uh, Jay and his coom jokes are not funny. Damn. I, I think they can be hit and miss, you know? Bit of coom there, mm -hmm. bit of, bit of flume there. Uh, any takes on historians telling a history slash story? Well, go, like go for presenting it. history with a yeah, with a narrative, like trying to present it more conventionally as a story. Yeah, I mean it's all storytelling in a certain sense. Yeah, just try not to lie. <laughs> we uh, be yeah, <laughs> if possible. Is history that... is interesting enough as is. Yeah. Uh, rags, do you go on the paper or outside? Asking for a friend. Also, hi, rags. 
go on the paper. The, the dichotomous proposition is there's no other places. <laughs> no, they just, <laughs> they just believe you can't go on the toilet, I guess. That's ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. Um, so this says Hot Fuzz is great. Whiplash for me, nothing like it. I guess they're just, I don't know if this I is reference like best Whiplash or favorites. Hot but, Fuzz uh, are really great. Yeah, they're both top <coughs> movies. Are you reading them from the storytelling catch up? Uh, the storytelling one? Well, so if you remember, we had one a, a little bit further back from this selection that said I was re watching the storytelling EFAP again. And so, like, I don't think these are from that one. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. But it could. I mean, we've talked about favorite movies many times, so. We have, true. Yeah. What do you call a man with no arms, no legs, lying in front of a door? Matt. Yep. What do you call ones no Matt, arms, sir. no legs, caught shoplifting? Oh, um. Oh, um. Let's see. Uh. Caught shoplifting? Mm hmm. Rob. Yep, and finally, oh. no arms, no legs, trying to lift a car. Oh, Jack. There yeah. you go, three for three. Pun fun. Ba -dum -bum -ba -dum -bum. We did it. Do you guys believe that it is impossible for mangas as a medium to tell good stories? No. What? Yes. What? No. Obviously, yes, we all do. Move on. Or is it that an assumption based on how bad most popular anime is? <laughs> No, we've it's... we've had we've had anime that's told good stories. Sure, I've brought them up. But I like I just... One Punch Man a lot. We just rely on the fact that everyone forgets that we've often like literally One Punch Man is like I'm one of the greatest TV shows I've seen. Cowboy like... Bebop, and I like it. I have physical DVDs of Cowboy Bebop and Ghost in the Shell on my shelf. Ghost on my shelf. Mm hmm. Ghost in the shelf. Yeah. Uh, Mola said the word sex and the stream stuttered. You're embarrassing the MI5 people watching you. All Who right. is the most Puritan between you and Fringy? Puritan? What do you mean? Yeah. I, I mean, like, like, you know. I don't know. What do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> so, like, I'm, I'm the most, like, I'm the most raunchy of us three. Which of you two is the furthest in the opposite direction? I have no idea. I feel like me okay. and Fringy are about the same in terms of how much we talk about shit like that. Because typically speaking, we're pretty driven by wanting to watch movies and stuff, but you won't catch us never admitting where we think people are hot and stuff. Mm -hmm. About the same, yeah. What do you think, Rax? You're a, you're a good uh, individual observer over there. I don't know. I, 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 I just don't know. Rags is a deviant for sure. Oh no, he'll have to be hunted down by oh the Eternals. Da, 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 da. And they'll hit you with their lasers and you'll go... Bleh, bleh. Well, one of them will hit you with the lasers. They don't all have that ability <laughs> for some reason. <laughs> yeah. Um... Yeah, I was, I, was, I was looking at chat, you got... Um, I think there's more votes for me being more Puritan, apparently. But um, I could see how that would happen. Uh, that does make some sense, because I'm, like, seen as ha Captain Objective, but, uh, hey, you know, I've still said when people are hot, and that counts for something. Did you guys bring up 12 Angry Men and Joker at any point? Also, I start work again tomorrow. Oh, well, hope, hope, it, hope it's engaging. And uh, as for, did we bring those up? Probably in uh, relation to some question we had, I don't know. Uh, maybe. But sure the fact that up. choosing those two it makes me think, so this wasn't a question of era, was it? Like, what's your favorite movie for the last 10 years? It's like, those two are pretty far away from each other. <laughs> but, uh, uh, yeah, about 60 years removed. So, yeah, maybe it was just favorite movies or something. My favorite movie is Shadow the Hedgehog video game trailer 2005. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. Can you see all of me? <laughs> 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 that might just cameo in a new video coming out soon. I don't mm. know. Hmm. 
Would love to hear a Red Dead EFAP one day, and only if you'd be keen. I love the games, they're my favorite, but there are a lot of flaws. Honestly, like an objective 6, Arthur is a 9 to 10, though. What do you think, Fringy? Uh, that, that'd be big, though. That'd be so much to talk about. Those are big games. What is um, um the average like completion time? Is it up in like fifty hours? Uh, or no? Red Dead Redemption Two took me, I think, like a, I I think it might have taken me like a hundred hours to beat. Damn. It, but you know, I'm part doing side quests and stuff like that. It, it took me a couple of weeks, uh, playing to get through it. It's like it's it's huge. That game is enormous. One is is faster. That's more like twenty thirty hours. Yeah, fair enough. Uh, have you guys heard about the North Star client for Titanfall 2? Also high racks. Hi. Um, I think I've no. heard of it, right? It keeps, like, servers running and stuff? It runs servers for the game? Maybe, because, like, they basically cancelled support. They, that like, Respawn has no interest in supporting that game. Which is a shame. Yeah, it is yeah, a real shame. Yeah, because it's the... It's... The, it... Yeah, it, it really is. Because it's a... It is a phenomenal game. And... It, it I, Apex is making too much money because people fucking people are mindless idiot fools who throw don't you money play at a that lot game. Of Apex, though? I do, and I don't. It doesn't spend throw a money. Goddamn right. dime. No, right, I figured. You you mentioned before that the monetization in that game is particularly. Shit. The battle pass is pretty good, honestly, but that's like it. Everything else is just horrendous in terms of loot boxes. And just general pricing and how scummy they are with things. Like you used to be able to buy, um, there would be special editions for each character, where you could spend uh, thirteen or so dollars and you would get a special skin for them and like a weapon or something like that. And then they they said, okay, those are going away. You're not doing those anymore. And then they reintroduced those as just general items you could buy at an increased price for less items. So it's just like it's nuts, right. but people, must people be spend money on it. Especially annoying when it's a game you like as well, right? Yeah, I really like it. I I play the shit out of it. I really enjoy mm -hmm. it as a game, but I don't give them any money. I used the last battle pass to buy the current one, and that's that's it. I I don't give them money. Um. This one just says, it's a very nice grill. Alright. One of my favorite God of War memes is young Kratos yelling at old Kratos, whom is staring at him at the caption, only Kratos can make Kratos look like a little bitch. <laughs> All the Kratos, Kratos uses... A lot, he? he does, yeah. He's a Zeus! <laughs> I Zeus! am the God of War! Um, but they spelt Kratos with a C throughout this whole super chat. Oh. It's yeah. With a K. Yeah. Terrible. Um, <laughs> this city rejected you. I beat you. I beat you. That's uh, Daredevil, right? This city rejected you. It's beat you. I beat you. But yes, that is Daredevil. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> this is off the wall, but I finally caught you guys live and wanted to ask what y'all think about Clint Eastwood's Gran Torino. Oh, I... I think I saw it once, and I don't remember what happens in it, unfortunately. I think I've seen it. But you, Rakes. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, what was, the, what was the question? Have you seen Gran Torino? No, I have not. There you go, so that's the best that's we could do. That's the Clint Eastwood movie, right? Mm-hmm. Also, High Rax. Oh. Hello! Also, how much rhino milk can the Empress produce a month? I think we're talking silos, right? Wait. Uh, Olympic yeah, swimming I, I, don't, I don't know. I do not know. It's a large amount, that's all I know. Uh, Storytelling is a form of communication, and like, say, language, you need consistency in its constituent parts, constituent parts to effectively do so. E.g., when I say, hi, rags, we understand I am greeting rags because we established the terms. Oh, no disagreements there. All right. Yeah, it's like, yeah, yeah, I guess. Can't cash this live, but here's some money tisms. Love to see this type of di kind of different show. Also, high rags and others scratches for the longoid. Oh my god. Oh. Thank boy. you. And yeah, I guess these we must have drifted into them now because that sounds like it must be about the. Well, then again, it could be about arcane. Fuck. 
Could be. Yeah. We have to decipher these uh <laughs> these these messages. We're so far from them originally, yeah. The OT Star Wars movies have better storytelling than the Lego game. However, the Lego game has never before seen moments like Luke doing acrobatics on the plank. Also high rags. Hello. The new uh, one's coming out real soon, ain't it? Yeah, which I'll be interested in checking out. It looks like a crazy Lego game. Let's put it that way. Yeah, I'm actually a bit excited for that one. <laughs> Um, hey Efap, please watch Disney's Encanto. It's new on Disney Plus and I highly recommend it. It's honestly one of the best Disney animation movies in years. I've heard good things about it. Um, the soundtrack is cool. Uh, there are a couple of cool songs that I've heard from that film. Um, I don't know anything about yeah, it. Maybe. It's, uh, yeah, just the, I think it's the most recent, just Disney animation one, musical. Um, I think the guy who made Hamilton wrote the school, uh, the music for this one. Oh, James Moore did not like Encanto. Oh dear. Encanto is pretty sweet. It's great. That's it. Too many different opinions in chat, can't rely on you. You guys have to be all the same, otherwise I get confused. Uh, half these people didn't even know who Cad Bane was a week before recording their reaction. I think we responded to one like that before. Um, I don't know. Maybe they did. Maybe they did. Maybe they... Because they might have done reactions to every episode of The Clone Wars, right? Because they might hmm. be those kinds of YouTubers where they just do reactions only. I, I know of a couple of them. Um, it's a strange industry, and I don't know how that would feel to be a YouTuber that your entire thing, your career is just... just reacting. Yeah. Yeah. Um... I suppose it could be fun, it's just the... Would you want to... If you were, if you were like, forced to do that, you'd probably want to do it with a group, right? You wouldn't want to do it on your own every time? Uh, I think I would want a, a group so I can bounce my ideas off other people and hear what they have to say. Because I just realized, like, yeah, well, we do it as a group, technically. It's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, just announced, Patrick Stewart is entering the MCU. However, not as Professor X, but rather Jean-Luc Picard. <laughs> In Man. another universe, the Star Trek exists, and yeah, it's kind of funny. John Luke, that that might even be better in terms of like he's been ruined by the Picard show, but Professor X hasn't been so, destroyed yet. Yeah, so it's, it's not a big deal. Yeah, <laughs> but like, what are they gonna do to Professor X? He's probably gonna be a fucking villain. Um, well, I mean, <laughs> we know, we know, we we seem to know his ultimate fate already. Yeah, I guess that doesn't tell us anything about whether or not he's a bad man, but it, he might be. Yeah. But uh, not for long. Wow, Fringy is the J of games. I Oh, I remember that one. Um, I think it was because I said I hadn't played, I hadn't finished Hollow Knight. Um, I would not consider myself to be the J of video games. I feel like I've played a lot of video games. Um, Still plenty I need to play, though, for sure. I feel like I'm much closer to the J of games out of us lot. Uh, Maybe, yeah. The fact is, I luck out with a lot of the ones we talk about I have played, but there is a shit ton of games I have not played. Mm -hmm. Yeah, same for all of us, probably. I have noticed that I play less games now than I used to. Um, but I mean, I've been playing a lot of Mario Kart lately. Yeah, I've been playing this uh, this old ring game. It's pretty cool. I'll play that eventually. Um. Uh, where are we? Bringy, did the Pokemon company steal the research on goo-based life from you? They have created Gumi, and its evolutions are Squeegoo and Gudra. <laughs> Those are funny names. Yeah. Um. Squeegoo. No, we 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 haven't had any breaches here, so they must have done their own. Other people can research goo, you know. I don't know. I just always thought it was really special, like goo. I mean, it is special, but there are definitely other goo proprietors out there. Does that bother you in any way, or is that chill? No, I think competition is uh, is good. Keeps you on your toes. Keeps mm. you trying to innovate on on goo. You know. I mean, they must have cornered the market because you haven't even got it on the market yet, right? Sure, but I mean, it's not about who's first. You know. 
You reckon you'll you'll blow them out when you when you? I'm release? actually unfamiliar with the properties of this goo Pokemon. Um, this is news to me. Ah, something to look into. Maybe uh, see if they've yeah. got any ideas that you missed out on. Mm. Especially if it's like just living and and and. Well, I don't want to. I don't want to presume too much about what you've discovered. So. I would say that that's a good choice. Fact that ruined my life. Fire is just air that's so hot it glows like forging metal. Is that actually? I did. I did. I've never even thought about what fire is <laughs> as, a, as a thing. Let me fire see. Fire is just air that is hot and glows. Yeah, fire. Well, because we all know that like you need oxygen for a fire to continue. I guess I just um. Yeah, fire is the rapid oxi uh, oxidation of a material in the exothermic chemical process of combustion, releasing heat, light, and various reaction products. Some of the fire is spicy air. Fire in its most common form result... Oh, well, no, that's not what I'm looking... So the flame, the flame is the visible portion of the fire. Um, I've never thought about it like that. Like, what actually is fire? Was well, that um you get taught in school, right? It's the there's three requirements. Is it fuel, this oxygen, and and ignition, right? Something like that. Yeah, I can't remember. Someone in chat will know. Fire is pissed off wind. No, I didn't. I didn't rattle that off memory. I I read a lot of Wikipedia articles. <laughs> like wow. Wikipedia. Wikipedia yep. is terrible for you. It's full of lies. Wikipedia is a great source. If you read Wikipedia, you're more informed on certain things than people full of very lies. constantly speak about them. There's actually four, but yes. Oh, I always remember being a big triangle. Uh, oh, yeah, I saw a little diagram on Wikipedia. So there is heat, oxygen, fuel, and chain reaction. That's the tetrahedron for fire. Huh. Yeah, I didn't know that. Fuel, oxygen, and heat. Yeah, maybe there's like a simpler version or something, I don't know, that, that doesn't quite cover it all. I don't know. Maybe. Um, it's possible shimmer vapors are incandescent at safe temperatures. Maybe, I don't know. Uh, do any of you have characters from Arcane that you want to play as in League? Uh, uh, no. I wouldn't, I wouldn't mind trying out Savika. I feel like her arm could be cool. Yes, me could be cool. Um, and you know, because you can adapt fucking any of them in there. I feel like you could get Silco, and all of his moves just relate to summoning bodyguards, and his ulti would just be some of Shiva Shimmer Monster, you know. And you'd just be like blah 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 and beat people up. Playing League, <laughs> I know. Can you guys do reaction to Netflix Witcher show? Um. I mean, I guess it's not like an impossibility that that could work, it's just that uh, we've had no real drive to watch it. I don't know if the it. passion's there. Yeah. And I haven't played any of the Witcher games, uh, so there's that loss on my part. Not that I need to, to be able to be like, is this show any good? But uh, yeah, I feel like that's a unfortunate lack there. Um, yeah, probably not going to happen, but you know. Probably not. I think there are just other things that we would rather devote all that time and energy to. Yeah, like Kenobi. Jurassic Park. Vote s'more move for next, for new Bender. Well, the person who sent that message, apparently John DiMaggio is back as Bender, so not bad. Um, I figured out the pattern. Mola's top three shows all have lesbians as their protagonists. In reality, Mola only became a critic so he could see more girls kissing. He's really a 14-year-old boy. I can't deny Is it. Is there a place, like on the internet, where you could just go and see girls kissing without having to be a movie critic? I don't think so. I would have obviously mm. like chosen a different career path if that were true. Yeah, I don't, I don't know myself, but... Maybe. Remember when... Uh, Duma was 100% sure that Silco and Jinx showered together. Must have had poor memory. I think he was just gunning for the for the the, the lake scene. Or oh, is that a lake? Or I'm not even sure what it is. Water place. Probably a filthy pond or something. Gross. 
To the chat, and anyone else, stop calling Shadavisti Shadman. Shadman's a real dude, and he's terrible, and it's a disgrace to call our Shad that name. Yeah, I try to avoid that. Um, it's an unfortunate connection there. Uh, he was just, that's not a, it's not the kind of guy, he was just, he's, he's a different person, definitely. Shad, Shad cool, that guy, there's a lot of, no. Uh, Rags, were you as edgy and silly in school and work as you are in EFAP, or is this something you only do on the internet? Like, would you drop a pun out of nowhere? <laughs> That's such a yeah, radical thing to, to do, man. Yeah, I'd, uh, I'd drop, yeah, I'd, I'd be really edgy and use a pun. Yeah, I'm pretty much <laughs> like this in real life. I don't, I don't swear around my parents, you know, I, I save it for when I really want it to, you know, mm. have, have a lot of weight to it. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty much like this in real life. I'm super cool and edgy and fantastic. And they follow up with asking, how do people react to that? So they want to know how people would react to your crazy and edgy puns. Hmm. They, get, they go pretty well. well there you go. I, I think I, I can read a room well. I know that, okay, I'm with these people, I could say these things. I'm with these people, I could say these things. You, you sort of know. You play the field, mm, you know? Mm. Uh, the new Lord of the Rings must be the big gay. Well, we'll see. We'll see. We're getting closer. We will see. We will see. You're gonna get five seasons of it, so... Ooh, you'll see plenty. For better or worse. Probably worse. Bit random, but in a previous EFAP, Rags asked what C.S. Lewis's friends called him, and to answer that question, they called him Jack. It's a name Lewis adopted in honor of his childhood dog, Jaxie. There you go. Hmm. All right. Speaking of smiling friends, did you know? Back. I was gonna say I don't remember when that conversation Me happened, but yeah. Uh, speaking of smiling friends, did you know that Zach Hadel, the co-creator and animator, as well as Charlie's voice actor, thinks Spaceballs is a terrible and lazily written comedy? I didn't know that. So he's wrong. Yeah, you're allowed to have that opinion. We 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 even let Jay have it. You can eat. Yeah, yeah, you can have the opinion. He's just wrong. Yeah, you, you'll be you'll be sentenced to indefinite torture, but that's you know it's whatever. Uh, the different in-game design and the arcane design for Caitlyn and Vi is that in the game they're for the male gaze, and the show are for the female gaze. But honestly, they're all great. Yeah, I don't hate Vi or Caitlyn in the game. Uh, I was talking to Fringy about this. The they just seem like they're built for different goals. And I'm not talking about, oh, they're built so big guys go, whoa, I'm so hot. I just mean, like, they feel like they're a part of different, um, like, like tones and elements. Uh, to say they're like, oh, God, they're hideous in the game. It's just like, all right, calm down. They're, they're not that bad. It's just like the arcane ones come across as a lot more um, people-ish as opposed to larger than life. And... Um, there's also the added bonus that we know them in the show, and so seeing them look like that feels like it's OC from somebody. You know, like, ew. Imposters. Pretenders. Yeah. Uh, Fringy's Law. When told about or recommended a subject, responds with, I'll get to it eventually, and proceeds to put it off indefinitely. Yeah, I've noticed that. <laughs> and I don't know that I'm ever going to change that. <laughs> well, you, I guess you can't. It's your law. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, best season of Buffy, personal favorite, is season two. That is a common Man. choice for the Buffy fandom, Man. and it blows my mind. Like, yeah, I get, like, there's emotional highs in it, sure, but, I mean, you're looking at a there's lot of so shitty much, episodes. Just, yeah, bad stuff in there. <laughs> it's mostly um, bad. Like. I'd, I'd say that probably the strongest is five, but my favorite is six. My favorite is definitely six. It's not even a competition, but um, yeah, five is a is a. I really like it as well. Mm -hmm. Um, and then of course it's just the, the happy mention of season three. It's a really solid season. Oh yeah. Um, Jinx fell into a vat of fringu and it made her crazy. Oh my god. Wait, what? I, I, I hey man, like I'm just reading the super chat. I, I'm not. I'm not making the claim myself. They're saying Jinx fell into a vat of fringu and it made her crazy. Lies! Wow. <laughs> Lies! 
Uh, which champ do you hate playing against? Personally, I hate Warwick. Anytime my health gets slightly low, I'm paranoid he's gonna gank me. Well, that probably means you're not playing Aram, which is what I play all the time. And the ones I hate in that are Kai'Sa, especially when she's built AP. She fires a projectile that can, like, come out of the fog of war, which is absolutely terrifying and annoying, and it deals shit tons of damage, and she can just fire it in, like, a couple seconds later if she hits you. Do the cooldown. Fucking ugh. And then, of course, Master Yi, um, Yasuo, um... There's a couple of others you probably know, but like the, the hated champions on ARAM will be a little bit different than the hated champions on uh, Summoner's Rift. Yeah, different different uh, mode of play. I um I would play more Summoner's Rift, if not for the fact that I just prefer ARAM at this point. It's way more fun to me. But I think it's because I don't take the game as seriously. If I was, I'd probably start playing Summoner's Rift. I think Theo plays both. Because uh, he likes getting getting into that hardcore gameplay. Fucking killing people. Uh, Vi is my favorite. She may not be the best character, like Silco and Jinx, but she does have the best facial expressions. Everyone talk about how awesome she is. I mean, I think she's pretty awesome, yeah. Yeah. Great facial expressions throughout. I, I just like mm -hmm. the... I disagree with the guy we covered, where he was like, she is a character that could only solve problems by punching them. That was a very bizarre take for someone who's obsessed yeah, with the show. Yeah, that's what her pacifist father told her. It's, it's very fucking... Oh, God. That was... They're so... Ah, uh, that video. Ah! Uh, look. Vi is real cool. And I think it's going to be a real tough journey for her in Season 2. Um, and it's 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 hard for her to be considered the best character when she's against so many others that are so good. Arcane's got a good problem, and that is that you can't quite figure out sometimes who's, who's doing the best in characterization, mm -hmm. development, and payoff. Um, but yeah, I like Vi a whole bunch. Fringy and Birdo have a love child named Fringleblomp. Nope. <laughs> Alright then. <laughs> um, Minuta aside, I think they mean min Minutia? Um, oh, uh, Minutia? Uh, that's not quite how it's spelled, as far as I know. With the needs of the population cut in half, Wakanda should have stepped up during the blip and created a new utopia for survivors, or at the very least, advanced the rest of the world. Probably had their own issues to deal with, but... They would have had their maybe. own issues, but still. I don't even know still. where to begin with the blip, man. Where do you even begin? Mm -hmm. Where do you yep. begin? I don't know that there's a recovery that resembles no, normal life no, anymore. No, no. No, no way. Absolutely not. No way. And then you bring all those people back without warning. My god, the resource crunch. Like, I wouldn't be surprised if it was a 28 days later situation where you're, you're wandering around different, like, like London is just this it's a little, it, maybe London awesome. survives, because or, or, like it's going to be active, but like there will just be many places in the world that are abandoned. Yep. Because there's not enough people to fill it up anymore. The world is made to accommodate all of us who exist right now. Really no more, and also kind of no less. Um, yeah. World's over is the, is the reality of the blip, but we don't want to deal with that because it's too complicated. God, where were the fucking people saying, like, Russo's, man, do you not know what you've done? Where yeah. were they? Where Why were didn't they? Why they just reverse time? Just reverse time. Could have solved all your fucking problems. I love the idea that, like, yeah. well, we can't reverse time and have Tony's daughter and stuff, can we? It's like, yes, you can. It's you like, can that's, we not? Yeah. You literally just, it's magic, man. <laughs> like, you just do that. Yeah. I feel like that's the, the, and also, you didn't have to write his family. You could have done something else. Well, that's like, why you weren't they, locked into that as a choice. It felt like that's why they existed. Yeah, to justify not rewinding time, I guess. Which I still don't. What is the Which overall benefit? Doesn't. I don't know. Oh, yeah, I don't know. Um, after Snap, only Metal and Jay are left. What happens to EFAP? Well, I guess it stops. <laughs> Probably, because yeah. Metal's got a full-time job and Jay's got uh, videos and streams to do himself, so... Goodbye, EFAP. Mm -hmm. A planet that is bigger than the sun is Yo Mum. Wow. Wow. That's what I call Cruel. 
All right, Wings quote of the day. I'm just trying to milk the last little bit of my viewership that I can. Really? He said that? I remember that quote. I remember that quote. Yeah. You sound so incredulous when you shouldn't. <laughs> should, everything that he does is incredulous. He always talks about how he only plays Call of Duty because he, he hates Call of Duty, but that's what people watch. Oh, man. They don't watch when he plays Siege, so he has to play Call of Duty, the game that ruined his life. I heard he's been playing Elden Ring. I want to see a compilation. Oh, really? Of like really? the best parts. That sounds like it'd be funny. Possibly. I hate monsters. Um, bonus quote. I basically just pick a. Uh, I know this one. So if someone says like, "Isn't it hard for you to have sex?" and he says, "No, I just have to pick up my stomach and put it on your back." <laughs> he's the <laughs> <laughs> Oh God, it's so just. Oh, okay. I mean, maybe with his mom. Hmm. Hmm. No, well, I mean, he's you pay, right? I assume. I don't know. I don't want to assume. He's, he's sure not he's, gonna tip her. I mean, he's getting. Who knows? Um, if I the New Republic can patrol out near Tatooine, how come they don't know and or do anything about the Pikes? Yeah, they're willing to enforce what? Just like, don't think about it. Yeah, that was so stupid. It, that was really you funny could... too, because you were like. How is he allowed to do this near an official airline thing? They're just like, wait a minute, what, what, hang on, why is there even X-Wings out here? Yeah, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah, why is he allowed to do this? And the people stopping him are Republic cops here at Tatooine? Like, it's, it's, it's like, it's problems on problems. Yeah. Uh, um, info dump. Spice only comes from Castle, thus the Castle Run. Hound was a spice smuggler, strong hallucinogenic with psychic effects uh, in some races. I don't know why they couldn't have included this in the show. Yeah. Yeah, it would have taken very little time. And we have so many things to cut completely from that show. Yeah, you could say that. We could, we could cut. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It would have been incredibly easy to just move, just get rid of something to explain why it's actually bad. The spice, you know. Mm -hmm. Cough Would is amazing rat. Everyone here should watch it. Cough? Cough? I don't know that one. I don't know that one. Not familiar. Oh, King of the Hill. Oh. oh. Okay. <laughs> Where did you learn to build? In a cave? With a box of scraps? On a farm? Man. In a cave on a farm. That's a funny line, too. The with a box of scraps makes it funnier, I think. Yeah. Um, <laughs> with a box of scraps. Would you, so, if when Iron Man was being made and you saw that line, would you want them to change it? No, I'd keep it. <laughs> but, like, would you be keeping it because you think it's kind of funny? I mean, I feel like he's, his, uh, it's, it's apt, right? His, his point, like, yeah, Tony Stark did build this in a cave with a box of scraps, you know? It's true. I just, um, the fact that, like, I enjoy it, but I'm not even 100% sure why I enjoy it so much. Is it because I think it's, no, like... it's a line. <laughs> is it, like, a prequel think... line where I'm like, God, oh, that's so funny, cringy, l l I don't or, really or... think it's cringy at all. I, I just don't find think it's it cringy at all. Well, it was a suggestion. I don't know. Like, why, why is it so fun? Um, I think, uh, I think it's just, I think um... It I think it's, it's a good the juxtaposition of the scene, though, I think. He's really chill with him, like, a second before. He's like, hey, buddy, I'm, I'm just asking you to make the tech smaller. Uh, and then he's like, oh, no, I can't. And it's like, Tony, St you know, like, he just gets so angry so quickly. Well, and, and, and his tie, like, flips around his arm, I think, because he does that so fast. Yeah, like, his, yeah, it does. His and he, finger... he really gets up in the dude's personal space. Yeah. <laughs> and, and it's the pause as well, just the pause to go, like, with a box of scrap, just to further emphasize how... <laughs> How easy it should have been for him to just make the tech smaller. It was, it was a great response to, well, sir, I'm not Tony Stark. Like, yeah. yeah. And then he got fired for that. Yeah. <laughs> Poor yeah. guy. Uh, 
He needs he needs to go work someplace where he can be appreciated. Mm -hmm. Like for Good a crazy for man. It, it might feel bad in the moment, but ultimately you'll you'll be glad it happened when you look back. Uh, wait, Fringy, you thought it was just about propane and you didn't want to watch it? What the hell, Fringy? I didn't Fringy? know what propane was at the time. Propane is a clean burning fuel, I tell you what. Well, I know that <laughs> now. I know that and I can appreciate wanting to watch King of the Hill just to learn about all the propane facts. Yeah. Uh, for your information... You guys... Go ahead. You, you ever cook propane? You ever had like a propane grill, stuff like that? Um. Oh, you mean like a, like a barbecue? Uh, yeah. Uh, I don't know. If, I, I. So now I am actually getting confused because I know propane is a gas, but I like what one is. Yes. Oh yeah, yeah. We yeah yeah. You use like propane tanks for definitely like barbecue. had barbecues. Can't be sure that they were done with propane. Well, it's just the tank looks very similar. Um. Mm. Yeah. You know. You know what a propane tank looks like, right? Yeah, I've got a picture pulled up. I mean, I have an idea in my head. Let me have a look. Yeah, you, uh, you probably will recognize it if you oh, see yeah, it, because yeah, yeah. it's in games all the time. Yeah. Yeah, you, uh, yeah, yeah. We definitely... Oh, God, that literally just makes me think about Half-Life. Is that even accurate? Are they in Half-Life? <laughs> like, Half-Life 2? Probably, yeah. I can't remember enough about Half-Life, but they're... they're they're semi-ubiquitous in games. as they the thing that you, that's lying around that you shoot. It's yes, making me think of the um, Source Engine, I think, is my, where my brain's going. Yeah, because in... Maybe. Yeah, they're in Left 4 Dead, and you can pick up a full propane tank and throw it very far. Which yeah, yeah, you yeah, cannot yeah, yeah. do. No, they're Though heavy. Though I will say, they are, they are significantly lighter when they're empty. Oh, really? Yeah. Interesting. Oh, yeah, 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 it's... You might not... Yeah, I guess it, it's not necessarily intuitive because you think it's gas is gas, but when a propane tank is full... You, that's how you check if it's full or not, is you kind of, you, you lift it up and you could feel if it's, you know, how heavy it is. Yeah, like my, yeah, like my dude. dad, when he, when he checks the propane tank, he just lifts it up and he could tell, if, you know, how full it is based on just the weight. I'm having um, flashbacks to like in versus mode when you become the tank and then you run into all the survivors and they have two of those and you're like, well, I may as well just quit. You're going to throw them, blow it up, throw it, blow it up and I'm dead already. <laughs> I feel like playing a tank in Left 4 Dead is feast and famine. Like either you're in a place where you could just absolutely destroy all of yeah. them, or you're in the open and you die instantly. Yeah, so. that's how it often goes. And then you try and fucking snipe them with throwing rocks and shit. Because you're just like getting annihilated. I remember Left 4 Dead. Uh, for your information, Nick Rikita likes cooking streams, so you should have him on to watch Tonald Cook. Maybe. Maybe. Veda, my powers have tripled since last we met. Um, do you mean he'll say that to, to, to Kenobi? It's going gonna, it's gonna to be, be great. So, wow. Um, there's a lot of that, that hot girls and boys video chat bought in, like, every stream. It just, it, it gets around. It does get around. It does get around. Um, you'd think there would be one person at YouTube who is made aware of this and then implements anything to stop it, but oh well. Here is my penance for ad blocker. Hi, Fringy. Hey. Uh, this last one, it just says, How the fuck is saying I would not rip you edgy or bad? I would not rip you. No, edgy. I don't know. Kids, I'm sorry. Could you say that again? Because I'm talking I think about I'm, the I'm... Sargon quote. But then they oh. wrote it like oh. that because I guess it through the filter. Oh. Um, so the reason why it's 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 like really bad as a quote is because it's like why would it even be said? You know. Yeah, it's it is it is horrifically yeah, like, bad optics. I was about to say like, there's no reason for us to explain that one, is there? Like that's pretty obvious. Yeah, it's pretty obvious. Why the fuck That's would you even bring so... it up? Like, that would obviously yeah. be what people would think. It's like, what the hell? Why would you say... You know, it's one of those things. Um, and he, he knew it was super edgy when he said it. He was just... He was hoping that the uh, the hilarity of it would sort of... I guess... Overcome the, the shock. But the thing is, it, it 
It's just going to be the thing everyone asks him about. Yeah, well, when, it's, when it's just this really hears. bad quote, like, that, especially if you want to have a career in politics. Like, <laughs> god damn. Yeah, because that's how that's how a lot of political careers can tank. It's just like the, a, a, a single some thing happens. Really bad quote. Yeah. Like, are there theories that like the please clap thing actually affected Jeb? It may well have, because it was hilarious. It's just like because it, it, there's this, you know, this perception please of clap. him that of him being incredibly <laughs> weak, thanks to stuff yeah. like that. Well, it's um, I mean, we've seen examples, right, where uh, where just like one, it was it was uh in the um the debate where Ronald Reagan with was it no not Walter was it Mal yeah Walter Mondale where he he did the whole thing of. I'm not going to use, uh, for political yep. purposes, my opponent's youth and inexperience. It's like, it's such a good line. Um, yeah, because Mondale Walter was Mondale like, oh, admitted. Ronald, he's old. He's, you mm -hmm. know, and so then Ronald said that. Yeah, and I think Walter Mondale said after the fact that he knew at that point that there was no chance that he was going to win. Like, at that point, it was clear to him that he wasn't going to win. And it's kind of interesting to think about that, like, you would win a political campaign based on, like, wit in a line. I guess, obviously, there's other factors, too. But the fact that it's so known that one line or one performance in a debate can screw everything up, um, that's super interesting. Yeah. Please clap is fucking hilarious, though. Like, <laughs> <laughs> please That's the clap. worst thing that you could say. You should <laughs> the, the, the subtle, please, this is like, please clap. Please clap. I think this... Pete Buttigieg had a similar moment as well, where he was yeah. doing a little speech that was meant to be inspiring. There's like, there was just a pause. He's like, "Come on, <laughs> you know, like, yeah. come on, to get them the thing. To start clapping." I I think the thing what you're supposed to do when you're like, "Damn, that was a cue to clap," and they didn't clap. Uh, t I think you've lost if you command them to clap. You have to then oh, continue yeah. the speech. The whole point is you earn it. Try yeah. again. Try and lift it up to, a, and you know how to do it to make it more obvious because the audience just did, the audience is specifically there to celebrate you. So of course they're waiting for the cue. They just didn't pick it up from what you just said. So you just have to do it again, but more obvious. Well, it's inflection. It's yeah. the way that you're standing. You can cue to people when they should be clapping, pretty obviously. But I'm pretty sure all Jeb Bush was saying was like, "Oh yeah, America needs to get back into the business of like making a, a better world." Like he said it like that. How's anybody meant to know that you meant yeah, to that? Sounds, to that? It sounds, <laughs> it sounds like, like there's, more there's more coming. It sounds like you're not over yet. That it's like, please clap. Yeah. You're like, uh, well, you know, oh, if, oh, if, yeah, if that sure. is the end of your speech, if it is the end of your speech, the safest thing you can do is say thank you very much. Like I appreciate you coming out, and that's usually people will be like, oh, it's the end. Okay, then clap. Yeah. Um, it's usually what clap. You do but, but telling right. everybody to clap is the fucking worst well, thing you can do. <laughs> It's how you do it in a stand-up special, like, whenever George Carlin would wrap up his bit, after the joke, you just say, thank you very much, and then do the bow, and it's like, alright, it's over now, that's, that's the end. Um, yeah, or like, I had a great night, like, yeah. thank you for coming out, just, just standard shit, you know? Like, <laughs> instead of, please clap. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, please clap. Yeah. Please clap. Um... <laughs> the white it as well in like a low rumble please clap please clap, like, <laughs> please clap. oh it's so sad what was uh, he thinking in that moment I <laughs> if i if you could bottle up whatever that feeling was and just experience it just to understand what it, it must be i i mean you feel bad for him you know? Oh, I guess you feel bad for him in the sense that of his family, you know? Like, he was the one who didn't get to be president. His brother was president, but he wasn't. Yeah, you never want to be the Jeb Bush of the family, you know? Which, which is funny to say, when he was, like, the governor of a state, right? Wasn't he, like, the governor of Florida for some time there? I guess I, it's something the Bush like family, that. And that's I don't even not know that if... impressive, though. Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't even know if he's like a good or bad governor or anything like that. It's just one of those. Uh, oh, well, it's just it's your like, dad oh, was president everyone. and your brother was president and you weren't. Um, and and you weren't even close. There was no world where that was going to happen. Yeah, you got booed. I out think pretty nobody quick. would, and nobody would blame him if he never tried. If he was like, yeah, no, I just, but I he just did, don't want to be president. He probably should have never tried. But he went for it. But he, he went for it. He's yeah. like, you know what? He's a bush. I'm well, go for it. Ah, oh, well, the thing is, I don't want to fault you for trying, you know, but, like, fuck, man. <laughs> he wasn't, I mean, he, he, he clearly he wasn't he suited tried. for it. He clearly wasn't no, suited no, for cause, it. Yeah, because remember, Trump and the debates and the, the, the primaries oh, yeah, that was just a absolutely, disaster. absolutely annihilated disaster Jeb. Trump is that, just... But that's the thing, though, is, ugh. right, if you're, if you're, like, going for president, you would think that you would have enough ability to look at yourself and be like, do I actually, do I really feel like I have the Am temperament? Am I president material? 
Yeah. Like, you got, you really gotta have a backbone. Can I? Yeah. Can I be the most powerful man on the planet? I guess. Is, like, I guess is that's, me yeah, Jeb exactly. Bush? And I guess that's um. <laughs> then again, a lot of people run for president knowing that they're never going to get it, but it gets them like a nice cabinet position or something. So mm. yeah, but you want to make a good showing, and you want to be you like, yeah, he didn't win the president, but showing. I liked him. Yeah. He said some things I liked, and he was conf. I like yeah, he lost, but I can imagine him as president. I think he right. would have made a good president. Even maybe if he he'd lost. make a good president next time around. You know, maybe yeah. he'll get another chance next time. Um, yeah, I guess that would be the impression you'd want to leave, but, um, I don't know. I love that his name, this whole time, we've always just called him John Ellis Bush Bush without realizing it. John Ellis Is that John oh. Ellis Bush Bush. <laughs> 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 yeah, He's Jeb Bush. This is like, wait a He's minute. Jeb Bush. <laughs> he probably calls himself that. <laughs> My name's Jeb Bush. <laughs> My name's Jeb Bush. You can call me Jeb if you want. So was that he's a bush, but more importantly, he's a jab. Like he is he's a, a jab. You know, more than he's a bush, yeah. Uh, you know LBJ, the president, Lyndon, uh, yeah, Lyndon uh, Johnson. Johnson. Yeah. You know he had a beagle named LBJ as well. Did he have a beagle named LBJ? I didn't know that. Yeah, little oh, beagle Johnson. Okay. <laughs> that's he, that's he I love he that. He really did. Oh yeah. no, I'm looking that up on Wikipedia. Dog. What was it? A beagle? Oh yeah, his his dog. Yep, yeah. Uh, his dog was Little Beagle Johnson, and his kids had the names, the initials of LBJ. They started yep, with they it. They did. It was a uh, yeah, it's a thing. Even the dog. Yeah, even, even the, the dog. dog. Little be Little Beagle yeah. Johnson. Member of the family, you know. You gotta keep the yeah. Um. Yeah, and and with that, we finished two of our uh, uh, two biggest sections of Super Shank Hash Up, and that takes us to almost four right. hours. And uh, I think we'll probably nice little leaf probably sit there. Yeah. Um. We got Thursday is actually free. There shouldn't be anything happening. I might stream uh, Elden Ring, but Friday I got a video coming out, and then I'm on Friday Night Tights talking about Batman because I would have seen it by then, and then we're talking about Batman on Saturday. Um, yeah, and then I think, I think, yeah, I think there's the, the streams that are coming up, but, um, so, yeah, I've got a video coming out, it happens, like, twice per year, so, woohoo, uh, I hope you guys like it, because that'll be the next event related to me now, uh, before I stream again, if I don't do any more Elden Ring, I'm not sure if I will. Uh, what are you guys up to, anything you wanted to talk about, do blah, 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 blah. Yeah, uh, just working on videos. Um, I've got, uh, yeah, I'm working on videos. That's uh, all I'll say. Got Cosmonic number six going up on the old YouTube tomorrow. I'm still, a new comic page I think came out today. And that's nearly finished. Last page is coming out real soon. Uh, and just chipping away at the big old endgame project. Hmm. Just working, that's all. Sweet. Well, because I'm actually looking to... I'm not even sure if I'm going to sleep or eating food. It's one of those. It's always one of those. It's, uh, yeah. I I did. This is there the second stream today. There aren't many other options in life. Eating mm -hmm. and sleeping. Besides it's a way to do it. You know? Yeah. Uh, but yeah, thank you all for hanging out. Uh, today's ones, because this was like, we caught up with last one's catch up, but now we got to catch up with today's. I'm going to save them. They're probably going to be hit next time while also hitting another section. And eventually... We will catch up. It's gonna happen. Gonna get there. Yeah, one day, one day, and we'll cry with tears. Tears of joy will be streaming down our faces. Yep, hundred percent. Um, we defeated the backlog. Until that time, thank you all so much, and we will see. Absolutely, you next time. thank you, thank you. Yeah. Bye. See everyone bye. later. Bye. 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 bye.